Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez Show. My come on now, the podcast with my co-host and the talent on the show, Nick Taylor. We are missing our moderator, Don, because Don has Quit. some things going on. He quit already on us. He, he got uh, realistically, he had some situation that came up this not this evening, and uh, we are handling it for him. But uh, we, you know, everything will be good. He'll be back next week. And um, if you wonder why I'm wearing sunglasses, it's to cover my tears because the Miami Heat just completely shit the bed in the second half of their playing game against the Philadelphia 76ers. I got with me Nick Taylor. Nick, tell them who you are. Uh, man, I'm a, I'm a damn drunk today because I haven't even been drinking lately. But the Miami Heat done it to me today. After having the game under control, we're going to dive into that. I'm Nick Taylor, man. Once again, uh, three-time CFL champion, uh, former Division One basketball player, um, former NFL player, arena football player, um, fastest person in the world. self claim, but it don't matter. That's how I felt. And um here to talk sports again like we always do. And, you know, we laugh and joke and have a good time. You know, it's come on now. Tonight is not a joking matter, though. Um, no. As you see, I'm actually wearing a Heat Jimmy Butler jersey, and I don't even know Jimmy Butler's going to play on Friday because uh, Jimmy Butler took a bad fall in the end of the first quarter, went up for a layup, got landed on by Kelly Oubre Jr., who landed right on his ankle. Um, he clear, It looked like his ankle, his knee. He was not right the rest of the game after that. But yet, you know, before we jump into the NBA playoffs and play in, Thank you all for subscribing. We are about 50 subscribers away from 500. Uh, We appreciate you, and we thank you for your continued support of our podcast. I know we, you know, I say particularly some outlandish, uh, what's the word? Uh, What's that word I'm looking for? Outlandish. uh, Shit, man. Shit, (laughs) but there's another word to it as well. Um, Controversial. I say I I make some controversial comments, but 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 they're real. And they're what honest. Was, I was just going to say one thing about Rudy. He, Rudy speaks from his own heart, how he really feels. He's not, yeah. he's not saying this for fucking likes or Mm-mm. subscribers or things. This is how Rudy's been feeling for the last, as long as I've known Rudy, Rudy's been my coach from AAU basketball. He was a writer for the Herald, the Herald, right? Sports yeah, the Sentinel. Yeah. So he done all them things. So I know him from before. And Rudy has always been passionate about how he feels about certain things. And we disagree about a lot of things. And some of his controversial things I, I agree with, you know, or I don't, you know, but it's always fun to talk to him and have a great banter about sports and things of that nature and things a little bit off of sports. So, you know, I'm glad we could bring y'all this content and then y'all are loving it because y'all been hella comments, whether y'all like Rudy or y'all don't. Um, it's been great to see it, man. And, you know, I comment back. Y'all don't seem to have too much of a problem with me. I haven't been too crazy, so I might have to get a little crazy. I want I I like the when people I want, I like the villain role. I I might want to get my my angel Reese on. Wear That's your me. crown. Yeah, I'm a- wear, wear your crown. I'm gonna get a crown too because apparently I'm a villain, so I should love Angel. Everything about Angel Reese. Um, that said, I'm not uh, for it. I'm, I'm no, not I'll ne- I'll never apologize for what I say. I don't care. I don't care whose feelings I've hurt. It doesn't matter. Now, I care about people that I care about feelings, but if my opinion on sports bothers you, I don't care. You can disagree with me. The one thing I will always we, say we, is this. We, we welcome, Keep it civilized we, when you we comment. We welcome the conversation about it. It's not, you ain't got to come and talk shit. Like, we welcome the open conversation. You feel a certain way? Talk this. We're going to talk to you back about it in a, in a very educated way. It's not going to be no dick face, shit face, dumb face, ass face. We'll talk to you. We'll tell you how we feel. You can come back at us, and we're going to hear you out. And then Rudy's going to write a 10-page essay back to you. You might not read it, but, hey, he's going to get his point across. And I will say this. I have no problem with dialogue back and forth, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with people because I think that's one thing that a lot of podcasts that's miss out on is, life. you know, the conversation. If, if you're going to do a podcast, and look, as we get bigger and bigger, it become more and more difficult to respond to everything Rudy possible. Still, by the way. But... I'll still do my best because I, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your dialogue and I, I appreciate your interest. However, let's keep it civilized. Your response to me doesn't have to be you're a fat ass who needs a burger or you're bald. Well, no shit. I'm bald. Okay. There's lots of bald people in the world. 
But when you like, if your first comment is "I'm a fat ass" and I'm a fucking moron, well, like, yeah. grow up. Yeah, Seriously, really grow sports. up because that is. If we're t- we could talk sports all day, you can disagree with me. I can disagree with you, but I'm not going to call you out of your name. If if you want to do that, go ahead. I'm not going to get hurt. My feelings don't get hurt about it. But understand, you've opened the door because now I can come back and do the same thing to you, and you may not like it very much. So, and believe me, my education level and my ability to write will completely disintegrate <laughs> as a human being. And if I look, and if I did, if I dig in on you, and if I actually research you, because I can trust me, it's not hard. Understand that I go for the jugular. So let's keep it civilized. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your your input. Rudy, I appreciate your opinions. How are you going to find a fake page? What? Some, Some of them are not fake. Some of them are not fake. Now, I mean, a lot of them are fake, and they hide behind fake because they're, they're fake tough guys, and I get it, you know. But, it, it, you know, number one, I don't know how fat you think I am, but I'm not. I'm 255 <laughs> pounds. Not fat. I'm I'm thick. I'm husky. I'm it. not a fat ass. So I don't know what, bro. I I can lift enough weight that I it, like, bro. It's it's all good. So um, that said, let's jump right into the NBA playing. I, I I'll, I'll hold off on the Heat one. Let's talk Ooh. about the Lakers, the Lakers and the Pelicans because that game last night was big time. Um, we heard some silly ass stuff come out of people's mouths on first take this morning between, from from Matt. I mean, Matt, Nick, you heard it, and, Matt Dog um, Russo, and uh, the Good Morning one, Greenberg. Yeah, the comment. I'm sorry. Let's jump into the comments first. Are made pregame where Stephen A. Smith on first take, Mike Greenberg on get up. Get up. Um, get up. These are guys on ESPN, and I want to talk they about this because it. well, Stephen A. They, tried to flip it. They're trying to. Well, he also called Brandon Ingram Basically. high today. Basically. On the bench. Basically. He called him high. And which to me is, he should be, like, legitimately, he could be sued for that. Um, and I think that's completely I mean, inappropriate. But you're talking about, I mean, maybe he looked a little high, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say that on ESPN. Now, all that said, they literally talked about throwing the yeah. game. For the Lakers to avoid the Nuggets, as if the NBA does not have a big enough problem with the opinion that games are rigged, ga- people, people are gambling, gambling, as we just saw. A- gambling? What? Well, players Whoa. are clearly gambling, as one just got banned for the rest of his oh. life. Uh, uh-huh. So we'll talk about that later. But when you're a media member and you're ha ha ki 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 about throwing a game, that's a problem. What are your thoughts Why on that? Why would you nigga? even say something like that? Like, you can say, you could go on there and say, hey, it's probably, it won't be a big problem if they lose the game because they get another chance. That's probably the better way to say it. But when you say, oh, the Lakers should just go out there and, and AD should say his back spasm is cracking up or, I mean, it's coming up or, or, or LeBron should say his knee or ankle just to get out the game so they could lose and get a favorable matchup that they think is favorable in their way because they, they don't nobody respects OKC. So when you come and do that, you just the dignity of the sport, like you just throw it down the drain for no reason. Like literally literally the Lakers said at the beginning of the season they want Denver. They said it's Mike Malone is laughing and ha ha and kiki and things of that nature. If you got if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. So why would they want to duck that anyway? And now you come out here with the integrity of the sport. And you go online as a media member, you just say that. That's just, man, as a as a player, that's something you never want to do. You don't care who you're playing. Like, it might be a favorable matchup the other way to get further. What so another team can knock them off? That's what we that's what we're looking for to get to the third round. And we said if, and then they somebody like, oh, because some an injury could happen. That's not what we want to see as fans anyway. We want to see the best players at their best ability play the game. We don't want to see injuries to cause another team to win. We understand that it happens, but that's not what we want to see is paying fans of, you know, streaming services or fans that go to the game to watch it. You know, that's not what we want to see. So when you come out there and just outright tell them, no, oh, they should throw the game. And you just have that as an option. Now, if they lose and you say, oh, they lose the game, then, you know, is it all that bad? They still get another chance to... I'm okay with that one, but when you just outright, he said, throw the game. He said, 
throw the game. And everything that's going on, Rudy already said it. Like, there's gambling going on. People, fans are betting on this. And they already are mad because anytime their team don't win or it don't, the bet don't go their way because they could have literally bet the other way and, and won, then they, they – they try to find nitpick ways. That, oh, the referee didn't call this because of this. Or, you know, this player is obviously not playing because of it. No, come on now. We have to do better, and especially as media members. And then Stephen A gets on freaking TV and outright fucking lies. Fucking lies. And, and try to blame it on the guy who asked the question. Like, this wasn't something that was being brought up before. Like, it was literally brought up by your colleague earlier on the show an hour and a half before two hours before yours and everybody was talking about it so for you to act like the 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 guy who asked that question did it out of bad faith or just out of you know no knowledge of being a media member you try to throw him under the bus that was just outright wrong in your i mean and and Stephen a does a lot of things to make it seem like he's better and he knows a lot better and things in that nature and i just don't i don't agree with him or like the way he goes about things that he's just better than everybody, which I don't think he is so much. Um, man, that just was shitty, man. Shitty take, shitty thing by him. And then for him to come out there and not acknowledge it, what actually fucking happened. Like we didn't fucking watch the show before or like people weren't talking about it. Like it just came out the fucking blue, the blue sky, blue and orange skies that he called it. Um, <laughs> that was fucking, that was, that was crazy and absurd, man. I didn't like it at all, man. So- since you mentioned Stephen A. Smith, again, you went back to his ego. Uh, what, what, did you hear him at halftime? Yeah, tonight? like where where I he knew. says, you know, well, you got he knew I knew I knew something y'all didn't know. You should have listened to me, and and then of course You're I knew the second lose. he said that the Sixers have only only two and thirteen down ten at the half. I'm like, yep. we're gonna lose the damn game. Mm-hmm. He just cursed us. And he did his little ego thing, and then we lose the game. So what does he have to say now? Did you know so much now? It, it, it's it, it, it's bothersome when you hear stuff like that for me because at the end of the day, yeah. this is competition. And, and and I get it if the Lakers match up with the Denver Nuggets isn't the greatest for them. But, you know, yes. they're still a good team. They're still playing at a Rudy, very high a level right now. And I don't and I don't like them. They're a very, But they're playing at a very they, – they finished off the season 14-5. and five. Uh, I mean, I, they did a great job. Um, now, they, I will say they overcome the blessings of the injury god once again. Ninety-five, ninety-five, with three twenty-eight to go, and Zion and busts just, his leg. Yeah, it, yeah, it always but, happens. But, it seems like it happens for them all the time, and 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 it's disappointing for the because we never saw what the yeah. ending could have been. We saw an injured team with no one with guys that couldn't score. Another guy who's high on the bench, according to, according <laughs> who's to not playing, and 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 then watch Alvarado make the dumbest pass on earth, where he has a layup and he kicks it out I'm, for a three I and it's that. a turnover and goes back to the way for a dunk and you're sitting here like this is the three culture that we live in drive and kick drive and kick drive and kick drive and kick, um, but what happens if what happens if you ha- well you know they would have been playing the Kings now who beat the brakes off of the Warriors. They struggle with the Kings. We didn't even get to that part. I didn't even I went into that part. Like, yeah. you're putting yourself in not even making a playoff you know, at all because you're trying to avoid one game. You had the, the favorable, you know, things on your oh. side by being that seed of having, you know, a chance to play a game to get in the seventh seed. And then if you did lose, you have another chance. So you just threw one game away to say we only going to have one game. Well, you know you have Steph over there. Even though Steph don't look as good as he looked, the beginning of the year because he's been carrying dead weight a lot of the time of the year with um Draymond Green's situation and Clay Thompson. But Clay Thompson been playing well. I'm not gonna dive into him like a lot of people are doing and Rudy is about to do maybe sooner or later. But um he's been you playing well Over the last second half of the season. <laughs> he's been playing good. But you're gonna put yourself in a scenario like that when that team just beat us by hitting twenty something threes a few weeks ago. A, a week yeah. ago? Hell it. Scenario where they're going to play a team that's a beating the hell out of them too. Game, the, the Kings to March Madness, where anything can happen. So, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you, you're taking a chance of not even making the playoffs, and that's what you're okay with. And that's what you know. What? Go ahead, Rudy. I'm sorry, I took over. Let, no, no, it's fine. I mean, so now we have uh, oh, the Heat tonight. 
Um, completely blow a 12, 13 point third quarter lead. And this will go down as, what did you call it? The chicken the tender chicken, game or chicken finger game chicken or the, game, the yeah, chicken game, really the fried chicken game, because the heater up 11 points, Momentum is up all 11 points. Caleb, Caleb Martin drives to the rim, draws a foul on Embiid. They go into a timeout. He comes off of the timeout, has two free throws, chance to push it back to 13, complete control of this game. And it's about, I think about six and a half minutes to go when this happened. Seven minutes. He misses the front end after he stands with the ball for I like 20 seconds, it seemed like. He do, no, he does. He does. But it seemed like it was even longer than no. that, than normal. It almost looked like he was on the line like Giannis holding the ball forever. And and then the next one, he misses. And then the next one, he shoots like this, and he bricks it. The place goes He's bananas because like- they're going to get some free chicken tenders or whatever the hell it is. And they come back down the floor. Nick Batum, who we decided we weren't going to guard for whatever reason, as if they didn't know that Nick yeah, Batum could shoot, which that's all he's done his whole, whole career, hits a three. It's now an eight-point game. Caleb Martin comes right back down the floor, drives around the edge, has MB, and B is gassed. And B can't jump. He's got three fouls. Jump into his ass. Draw a foul. Something. Anything but what he did, which was do that typical drive and kick. And he tried to kick it around um, MB. MB. Pat, turns it over right to Tyrese Maxey, I think it was. Pushes the ball down the floor, and now it's a six-point game. The entire game changed. The energy of that arena completely changed. And mind you, this is all while Jimmy Butler got landed on, is not playing very well. Tyler Hero, at one point, was four for 19. And, and and we sit here and people talk about why I don't like Tyler Hero. That's why. Yeah, he got a little hot streak at the end of that game. Great, but but if but if he had, but if he had but if he hadn't played terribly for most of the game, we're up twenty fucking points, and we we overcome the fact that Jimmy didn't play well. Now the guy I have a oh, bigger uh, beef with yes. is Bam Adebayo. I'm sick of watching this guy play basketball. I can't stomach it anymore. This man, every single big game, absolutely disappears. Joel Embiid needed to be in a wheelbarrow, pushed up the floor, a wheelchair. The man is bent over from the first quarter on, can't breathe, and yet Bam Adebayo finishes with nine shots, ten points, on five of nine shooting. He has 12 boards, and yet he's not even guarding Embiid defensively. He's guarding Batum, and Batum is the one torching Miami. And I'm sitting here watching Eric Spolster, who was an amazing coach, and in the first half, the zone worked. You can't expect to play a fucking elementary school zone for four quarters in the NBA. And they st- they stayed in it the whole damn game. And in the fourth quarter, he's guarding Batum and Caleb zone. Martin. So it it ended Taylor. up working out that way. It wasn't like he was guarding Batum. Hey, but he was never guarding Embiid. Yeah, because he never guarded Embiid at that point. Because Embiid was outside. Embiid was standing at the other zone. Get, get out of the damn matchup zone. Well, get into a damn man to man. With, with Spolter. You, you, like you have to adjust. You, really, you got to adjust like, to it. Would you fight? When does Fo deserve to be on the hot seat? You asked me that earlier. This I and asked you that the other day. Know, when does he ever? When is he ever in danger of losing said, his but job? But I would like his playoff success. You know, supersedes what he does in the regular season. So you know, and we're gonna and be an eight again Riley, if we win. You no, know, it's loyal to his people. You know, to nature. To but a fault. Except to except to Dwayne Wade when they needed him not to. You ever have a problem that you wanted to? I say no. But I do have problem with some of the things that he does in key moments, and it's been and and then today reminded me of what it was. I forgot what it was. It was when we go in this zone, and when the team is just trying, and and it worked for a while. And, we, it and when the, the team starts trying time. to get back in the game with threes, that's what that's the easiest thing to get threes in. It worked early off. You threw them off, but now you know. It's, they were, I think, three you know, for twenty in the first half from three. Shooting like that, the, the whole game, especially when they get open. These players are just too fucking good nowadays to just. The two was open wide like open that. every and shot. The two took. has a quick release, so that even make it even. He, he don't even bring it down, so he catches up. He just releases it from the top, so you can't even get out there. So you really need to be attached to him, especially when he gets it going after he hit two. All right, Spo, come out of the zone and go, man. I, I, you probably scared about Maxi blowing by us because we're getting blown by by everybody that also. So maybe he's worried about that also. Uh, I mean, but also, and B was not the player he was, you know, to be. So we're giving him all this attention when we literally could just put Bam on him, or we could have kept Kevin Love and who played. We were, we were double, we were exactly. doubling him, twenty-two and feet rap, from the and rim. If you're let a team get back. 
20, and you don't let a team get back in the game. game. You let a team get back in the game by getting twos, not by getting three. Because in three, yes, in three I've possessions, always said that. they can agree. cut a ten point lead down to one in three possessions. It, it happened. Bam, bam, bam. This NBA. It's literally, it's literally and that's, what and happened. This NBA. That's what happens. So that's my gripe with Spo. He stays in that zone too long. You have to adjust. Come out of it. And another thing that I noticed about the Miami Heat, and we Ben said this even last year when Duncan Robinson was going through a slump. Our offense goes to dirt crap without him out there because he's present. No, he, you need he, Duncan. We he's need the Duncan one Robinson. that our offense exactly. is triggered around because everything moves around him. He's, he, he sets the back screens. He comes off screens, and then you have to send two people out there, and the other person slip, and they get a layup, or they don't get out there to him. He get a quick release. He get the shot off. It just makes it a little bit harder for the defense. So when he's not out there, our, our offense gets so stagnant and things of that nature, and then – the bam, the bam scenario. Like I, he gets me, he gets me every year. He got me again this year, and I said I wasn't gonna let it happen. Every the bam year. plays so good the first half of the year. Every year he comes out, he shows a couple of different moves that that's in the arsenal. He got the mid range jump shot. He goes on the post. He got the fade away. Everything's working for him. He's not being shy to get the ball up. And then we get around the last 10, 15 games of the season, twenty games of the season, he starts getting fucking gun shy again. And I'd be like, no, you're the best fucking player on the team or the second best player on the team. Shoot the ball. We're not going to be mad at you if you're being aggressive. If, if Bam is is four for 19, I'm not mad. I'd be like, hey, my best player came out. Dude, I want him. To, I, I, you have a guy who can't move so, guarding him. Why only, aren't you only attacking thing I him? Give him a little, only reason All I give game. him a little bit of, you know, slap, you know, I give him a little grace for it because when you play Embiid, his, well, he should be guarding Embiid. And, he wasn't should, guarding him. Drain him a little bit, so his offense isn't going to be there. So I'll take that if it's if, you know if he's taking and beat out the game, but he's not guarding him, and that changes the whole fact. Go, I need you to be aggressive and being that guy. So that's a big thing I have about them, man. And it's just it's real frustrating to watch sometimes because they're such a good team, and they'll they'll scrape by this game right here, and then they'll give Boston six a hell of a series. The, the, the first the the first half they looked Except exceptional six minutes defensively. They were the, that was the best defense I've seen the Heat play in two months. The Sixers didn't know what to do. They were turning the ball over left and right. I think I texted you. They had seven turnovers, and we were still losing. And, and then all of a sudden, it started to change because we started making some shots because we kept turning them over. But you got, I, I don't – Bam Adebayo was on the Olympic team. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. There's, someone has, so, for what? I got. I, I don't need him out. I don't need a useless guy who's not going to take a shot. I mean, that's all we got. Well, the US Anthony Davis can do that. They got and, and Embiid's playing for the be, U.S. for Christ's sake. And he, Embiid and, and AD. I, can, I, you, I don't need. I don't need uh, another. I don't AD need on them out of Bayou out there. Let him. AD on the team, huh? Yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's Embiid and I, AD. Yeah, and and I just. I mean, they also. Stacking three point guards. I don't know why Jimmy Butler's not part of this team. Jimmy he must just not want to be because he just yeah. he must not even want to be because to, to tell me that, MB, that that Bam's on that team ahead of him is ridiculous. But every, I mean, ten points, dude. Jimmy Butler's hurt. You know he's fucking hurt, and you won't take the damn ball. Even dribbling the ball up the floor. We don't and have he, a point guard he, now. He's really we good. At it. Our he's like guard. our other point I know guard he is. for the most part. How, how about if he's dribbling the ball with 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 with, with speed up the pressure. court? What I've is he going to do? One time to and be one year. I was like, damn, okay, he's really attacking him, bro. So we traded our point guard for another point guard, and what happens to the point guy we trade for? He's injured. He's not playing. Terry Rozier's out. It's like it's unreal. Duncan Robinson's out, and the guy who's beaten us now three times, which is why we are not a freaking six seed right now. Is Kyle Lowry for Philly, a- and it's mind blowing that the the guy who we gave away for basically seems like nothing now because we have nothing for it, and we're running Tyler Hero at point guard the entire game. Why not run Delon like, Wright at point guard? He's, he's, Where's Patty Mills? I mean, Patty's more of a shooting. A, a shooting. I, I know, I but know. Tyler Hero can barely DeLon, handle DeLon, the ball. He's, he's you know, Hero can. Barely handled the ball, and, and he's out there, and he turns the ball over. Yes, he got pushed in the back. They can say what they want. He got flat shoved in the back by, by Nick Batum, which made him step on ha- at, at midcourt. But even the fact that you're handing the ball off 
two feet from the midcourt line just shows such a lack of intelligence. And, and Hawkins, though. That was Hawkins. It's Hawkins. The most, such a lack of basketball intelligence that you're doing a, a handoff with tight ass defense like that, two feet from backcourt, from the midcourt line. It is absolutely stupid. And it's, it's typical of what Tyler Hero does. It, he does things like this. Even the last shot he took, he should have shot the ball when he caught the ball. No, he needed to do a pump fake, a dribble left. He burned three mm. seconds doing that. It made, probably didn't make a difference. But by the time the ball goes in, there's point three left. If it doesn't go mm. in, it doesn't go in. But making it to make it a one-point game so you can pad your numbers, um, I'm very frustrated. We're going to play the Bulls. Because the Bulls are waxing yeah. the shit out of the Hawks right now. They're up 13 at, at midway well, to the third, yeah. second quarter. Well, we um, same we've as we played them last, last year. We've seen, we've seen the heat we up at last year. halftime. And- yeah, I mean, but the Bulls are at home, and we're not. We weren't. Um, that said, I mean, look at look at the situation with the Lakers and the Pelicans. The Lakers uh, withstood a major yeah. comeback. Shout out to them. Uh Zion Zion got hurt though in the, late in the game. He's out already, which we've talked about. I don't know why you would rule him out three days before the game. Um, I think you should wait. I don't care what it is. I yeah, think you wait I, till the I, day of. You mark him as questionable. You don't I let think, the other team game I think plan nowadays for you. With all the betting going on and things of that nature, I think it's, I think it, no. I think you really have to like your injury report has to be kind of three days in that. advance. I mean, or maybe coach. Um, what's my you mark him as questionable coach. or doubtful. You make him as, mark Maybe. him as doubtful. To mark him out three days early, you've now given the Kings all – because you can't flip mm-hmm. it now. No. If you've marked him out, you cannot flip it. I don't I, know. I don't think you can. You can't flip it and now say, oh, I, well, he's I'm not play. sure about that per se. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know. Because if the Heat marked Jimmy Butler out for Friday, <laughs> I'm not even going to watch the goddamn <laughs> game. Be I'm not even going to watch him, but I don't know if he can play. Know, his knee you, know looks that, you know we'll win by 15. You know that's how we roll, right? But that's been the whole year. Every time oh, God. one of them go out and we start rolling, and then everybody comes back and be like, oh, we need we're Duncan Robinson. We've done one six games in a row. We need, we need yeah. Duncan yeah. Robinson. Yeah. In but the hey, line. man, I want to give a shout out to Zion. I think he. He looked yeah, great. Because a lot of, 40, a lot of shit was talking about him from the game before, and his hype. His he lost play, weight. His he high lost weight. Off. He was made to seem like the next, the next big thing, and the injuries happened. But then this year, he actually played seventy five or whatever amount of games. Why did why did it why because did the high he was, fall because off? he was injured? Oh, they, they haven't been marketing him so much, you know. One play. Well, they yeah, haven't been playing. He actually played. So, well, no. but, and then well, it, it still the, the hype train never came back. Up from why he what, what, what will happen to the what will happen to the hype train and Caitlin Clark if that happens to her? The same thing. The hype train will the, will no, he, will he will, will, up will as go the next down. Big thing, and then now I just felt like, damn, he actually played this year, and now well, we don't even right. talk about him or consider him as one of the next great players coming up. And I mean, and then once I I was about to say, damn, I need to apologize because I was. He, and he, he, he balled, and I'm like, now okay, that's the guy because when he has his head down and he's a man on the mission, there's nothing you could do with him. He, you know he's coming at you. And mm. there's absolutely – he gave it to AD. He gave it to LeBron. He gave it to Rui. He gave it to whoever fucking wanted. You want it, you want it. You couldn't get it. You come he was get killing it. him. He didn't give a he fuck who you were. They all rep the same smart check yesterday. He, he – they was – it was – So who do you got, who do you got Friday? I got the Kings the or the Pelicans? I got the Pelicans. It's Pelicans in New Orleans. They're playing – I don't think Even they lose another game at home. I think yeah. I think we yeah, steps up, McCullum steps up. Um um I think I like Valachunas. I think that's a game that he'll play well because he's going to get some bonus somebody his side. I like him when he playing to get real big. I really like Valachunas game. But you know this new NBA and things of that nature, they don't oh. really give him the ball down there. Well he 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 ain't the he ain't the same guy he was with he, Toronto I mean, back in the day. But he still has yeah, he ain't the same. They don't use. They don't use him the same way anyway he used to be used. Because I mean, he used to kill the freaking time. Big freaking body. He killed he the heat. Amazing touch around the he basket. The and then he was even like hit. He started hitting that three pointer shot from the corner. So that changed things. But I'm still gonna go to New Orleans to get it in. But I, I think the NBA has missed a freaking opportunity. Even though Rudy hates uh, the Lakers and things of that nature, man. And and you know what they talk about. What did I miss? You know, no, How they miss about, him, what did they miss? Per se, but. Basketball is not as fun in the playoffs when you don't have Steph and LeBron in it. I don't care what you say. They are needle movers. 
They might well, be LeBron's out in four it. games or five games, but I know we, we had a chance to get LeBron in it if they bought, beat them, and if Steph Curry handled business against. I, I think that if you no, had, no. had the Kings do their, I think if the Kings had done their job, or the Pelicans had, Pelicans had done their job in the season finale, and you would have had the Lakers no, versus the, the Warriors in that that's good nine thing, ten like, game. That would have been that that might that might have been watched as much yeah, as my, the Caitlin Clark that, 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 that would have been good for a night. That'd have been good for a night to get LeBron and Curry again. But you know how everybody say basketball is is better when the Knicks and the and the Lakers. I that's horseshit. That's horseshit. That's horseshit. I, I, I don't believe in that. But with that's LeBron, nonsense. the Knicks have the Knicks have won the championship before I was born. Playoffs so together, man. That's an amazing thing, man. You know we're not going to get it so much longer. They're both on the. Last end of their careers. Well, that's the job of the new guys it to is. step up and I be mean, those guys. We definitely want to see it one more time. Of uh, Rudy don't, don't want to see them, but I and the rest of the world wants to see that. I don't want to see another freaking. I don't want to see another freaking floppery of, of, of LeBron against somebody, and then you, watch him flop, flop, LeBron. flop, and watch him run some. Watch him run somebody over, and then not be called on him. But yet they bump into him, and he you're, goes flying you're thirty yards away. Your lover of Caitlin Clark, she does the same thing with her push off. Well, no, no. push off. She weighs a hundred. She weighs a hundred and fifty. She pushes pounds. off with that damn left arm all the time. And LeBron pushes off with his all the time. He's two seventy. Like there's a big difference. Her little, her little, her little shove is. is hell, Michael Jordan no, did that no, no, same no, no, shove no. off. So Jordan shit was like, fucking a fuck. Jordan took his Jordan took his left arm yeah. and completely moved yeah. the guy's yeah, body yeah. over. Yeah. I, I, I mean, so what do you think of the? Okay, so now we have the Knicks and the Sixers. Damn. That's already done. Uh, who, who's winning uh, that series? The, yeah, we got to get through the this. Sixers, the Sixers put it off. Here. I think MB gets a little bit better. Um, yeah, I think that's really? the series where Maxi comes okay. out and show that he's um the guy, the right guy for the team, rather than having a hard. So uh, the Sixers, Sixers and how and many? Six. Oh, you're gonna yeah. piss off Boozer, man. Huh? Boozer will be an un- unhappy a- person. Um, Bucks are playing without Giannis. They are he's out at least for a couple of games against the Pacers. The Pacers yep. mopped the floor with the Bucks all okay. year, scoring at will. I know you have this belief in Bobby in in Bobby Clinton Bobby Portis, Portis or twenty four points, points per game this series. And and they and, and they, who's gonna win this series? And they're gonna win the series without they they're gonna win the series without points Giannis. per game this series. And but look, but look, but look, but look. The Bucks will be down three one, and then Doc River flips oh, the on. script, and they win the series four to three. He comes back from a three one. He flips the script. I'm telling yeah, you, you're crazy. Happened. Doc River, um, Doc River's gonna flip the script. He's been three one three one, and he's gonna have the whole. Um, Cavs, Cavs, Cavs and Magic. And Magic. The Cavs, the Cavs went down the down the stretch were terrible. Um. But the Magic are completely inexperienced. Um, what are I your like thoughts? the Cavs, man. I, um, even without yeah, they play down the stretch. Play down the stretch. I think um, it turns around in the playoffs. Spider Mitchell playing right. He's still he's healthy. I don't know. I, I, I he played in their season finale that they were winning in the fourth quarter. Then they no, pulled no, everybody no, out. No, you know, Spider gets a little bit better in the playoffs. He, um, he has Struce with him now, who know how to win games and things. <laughs> no, I no, wish I'm we still saying, had him. I, I still like. I like the Which Cavs. They, they have a little bit more um, experience in Orlando. In what? They're dead. Huh? Cavs and what? Yeah. Cavs and seven. Cavs and what? Okay, now we go over to um, whoever OKC plays. They're going to play okay. the. Um, they're going to play either the Kings or the Pelicans. OKC. What will it be? OKC regardless wins, of who it is. Um, they beat the they beat the Kings. No, they beat New Orleans in a uh, five. Five. And then the Nuggets and Lakers. <laughs> you say it out loud. I'm going to ask you for a bet, and I'm going to hold you on that bet. So you better be right. You better Nuggets tell the truth. Now. In seven, seven. You they're think they're going to push it to seven? They haven't. They haven't beaten the Nuggets in two, three years. I mean, <laughs> okay. playoff time. Eventually, um, eventually they have to win a okay. game against them. <laughs> I don't know. That's what they always say. Timberwolves, Timberwolves and, and Suns. Suns, man. Look, upset, upset alert. I got the Suns and the Suns in six. And then finally, oh, not finally, but finally for the West, the Clippers and Mavericks. The Mavericks in six. And last but not least, 
I'm gonna go on a limb and say the Heat win on Friday over the Ooh. over the Ch- Chicago Bulls. Um, they're up nine right now with two minutes to go in the second. Oh, geez, it's getting closer. Um, regardless of who it is, Celtics or, or whoever. Um, Celtics get the Celtics Heat back this six. year. I, I didn't want to play them so early. I wanted in them six? to let the. I wanted Jimmy to get to his groove. Maybe Terry come back and we get the four. Yeah. You said Celtics in six? Jimmy finds a way to get a game. Right. Um, okay. I'm going to sit here and I'll give yeah, you mine hear, now me since hear. I let you start do off um, Let me go. Um, we got the, the Lakers okay. and Nuggets. What do you like? Nuggets, Nuggets and five. five. They don't have a chance. Uh, gentlemen sweep. Okay. Um, then we have Clippers Nuggets and Mavericks. And five. Mavericks and five. Kyrie. I think the Clippers that are falling to pieces. That, that was your team that you told me was championship contenders. Didn't they, didn't they weren't they up like forty on the Mavs last week in the in the, in the second half of the game or uh, something that was, like that too? The Mavs didn't play. Wasn't no, it them? That, that was in the them. I don't think the Mavs didn't play. Oh. Okay, I, 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 I got to look got now because I get a sword. They won to some Charlotte. Was it Charlotte? Somebody they got played. That the the Mavs lost to the. Uh, where is it? Was it the, no, no, it was the Thunder. My bad. Them. They were down like four, they lost by fifth. They lost by fifty to the Thunder. And then my bad. Clippers lost to Kenny Lofton. Yeah, the Clip, the Clippers were down thirty five, or no, they were up thirty five to the Suns, and damn mm. near blew the game. Um, who the hell the Clippers have played late, lately? Uh, real quick before they the Clippers the Clippers ended the season on a three game I mean, losing streak. <laughs> lost to the Suns, lost to the they Jazz, were, lost to the Rockets. They didn't they didn't play nobody. They finished strong. They finished yeah, strong yeah. before they started resting yeah, players. They, they won four. They they they, won, they lost two, won three, lost one, won yeah, four, I mean, lost. They three. won those four games and then they rested their players because it, two, it was a four, lot for them to play. Six, the, seven, um, for them to play the match. Anyway. So um, wait, 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 hold on. I'm just counting this real fast. Two, four, six, seven, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're ten and ten in the last twenty. You can't count the last. <laughs> they, they did. They did hit a slump and then they got it right. I mean, sure. all right. So I, I think the Dallas. I think the Mavericks are going to wipe them out. Um, uh, I'm sure someone will get hurt as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Timberwolves. Sun. Tim, Timber. Timberwolves in six. Timberwolves in six. Uh, I don't trust. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in. Uh, in uh, Bradley Beal. But what about KD? And Booker. then. Uh, all right. Uh, what about? Don't um, matter. Uh, uh, we got OKC versus. Um, I'm pretty sure you're picking Sacramento. So, uh, if it's Sacramento, yeah. first of all, I don't think Pelicans are going to win because if Zion mm-hmm. can't play, I don't think they're going to win. Yeah. I tell yeah. you what, OKC is good. They're really good. OKC is really good. I think OKC. I think OKC sweeps. Okay. Four well, now we go to. Let's start off right off the bat. Heat Celtics. Heat win. Yep. You're going to yep. go there first. Celtics, 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 and four. No, you're just mad right now, Rudy. Rudy, you're mad. Rudy, no, you're mad. Uh, uh, four. You're mad. Sweet. You're mad. Sweet. Jimmy Butler's Against not going to play. Seven. Jimmy Butler's not healthy. He'll be He's not healthy. Right He's not healthy. See, this is see, this is the thing. Jimmy Butler is not healthy, and you saw it tonight. He's going to magically jack. Why is this guy always <laughs> hurt when it matters? He was hurt two years ago when we lost in seven. He was hurt. <laughs> He got hurt, you know. It was he was hurting versus the the year before. He was hurt the year before that. Even in the finals, but Rudy, he wasn't one hundred percent. That's the game he it's plays. Like, he plays a he, real physical game, dude. But it, but he gets hurt on the weirdest shit. He got hurt because a man landed on him, like you don't see anymore. He landed. You missed it. He landed square on his leg, like on I think his I saw the leg. End of the I didn't see the whole thing. Uh, it, it's like. It's always okay. something. Right. It's always something. And if he has no explosion, then he's not going to be aggressive to the basket. He's not going to get to the line. And we don't have a chance in shit. We let, we don't have any shooters left. Max Drews is gone. Gabe Vincent's gone. Is Terry Rozier going to play? If our point guard is Tyler Hero, they will mop the right. floor with us. I did not think that we would be without two of our most right. important players. Well, three right. now for the most part. But absolutely, if we don't have a point guard, we cannot okay. beat the fucking Celtics. Like, we can't I, even I compete that. with them. And, and if Duncan Robinson can't go with all the backdoor shit he does, 
I know you love your Haywood Highsmith, but Haywood Highsmith fucking missed a bunch of wide open wide. shots. He missed one wide open, no one around him by a mile in the corner. Like, and his forty, his forty percent three point shooting. Yeah, but you know what? Steph doesn't miss them. Like the uh, Heisman was so wide anymore. open. It's like you need that shot. We up, you need so that shot. We we still you took need... the lead after that. All right, let's we go. That... Um, let's go right into it. Huh? We're gonna get swept. Um, right, we're gonna right get swept. Um, and 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 they'll save and they'll save Philly, me money this Philly, week. Um, Philly, New York, New York in six. No, nah, New York in five. And New so York you don't believe in Maxi. Um. I don't believe in Embiid, but they, I think their team um, is so much better around think, him. I like the addition. I, I don't think. I don't think. What? But based, based on I like, what? I like him as a stretch four. I like. I like Buddy Hill. Nick, Nick, I know. His, I know. I know. He's the same name as you. He, he's averaging five. No, points I said I like him as a defender. I like. We him, we, like we, him, we 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 managed like to make. Defender, we we managed to make mediocre like guys look like superstars. I like his playoff experience. I like him being that. Fifth guy, I don't, he don't have to be that guy. I like Kyle Lowry. Fifth guy, he don't even he I don't like even Kyle start Lowry for that. That one game where he he does his one playoff game. Oh, like, so you I, love Kyle I, Lowry? Been, like, I didn't have a problem with Kyle Lowry. You want to trade him? I didn't want to. Oh, you, no, did? Not you so didn't? Much. You did? I said uh-huh. I would take Terry Rozier because a Tyler Hero. We need somebody else who we can depend on. Come on, man. you know things of that nature. If Tyler's going to be in and out all the all time, right. but um. I like Kyle Lowry's leadership as a point guard, getting the ball to the right person, taking charges, doing all the little things. I, I love him as a point guard. Even at this age, you know, he just can't do – he's not going to give you – If that, you shouldn't have been screaming to keep him because, I mean, he didn't do nothing for us the no, last month true. he was with us. And then he plays against he us and kicks really our ass. Either, and but he must he go. He must... I think also they're helped by Maxi. Maxi's the yeah, point so guard for them, really. So I love like combination Maxie. point guard. All right, so you said them uh, New York and five. Damn, that's crazy. Uh, New York and five. Bucks, um, Indiana. I, I think the the Indiana Orlando, and five. Um, Cat, Orlando okay. and seven. Okay. All right, we can move on. All right. Oh, okay. Well, who's, Orlando who's and seven. Yeah. Of what? The NBA? Jokic. Who do I think is going to win? Who, or who think do I think win? should win? Okay. Jokic. Because some people, some people think that. Some people think that Doncic should win. Don, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't subscribe to this thought process that a, the six seed, or I'm sorry, uh, the they, five they, seed, four, the mean. fifth seed. I don't, I don't, I think winning, I think winning absolutely matters in MVP <laughs> voting. Um, I think it matters. I think complete. I think having a complete game matters. I think a guy who is absolutely void of defensive ability matters. Um, if you can't defend a parked car, I don't think you're the MVP of anything. And and you said it yourself, Jokic is surprisingly good defensively, even though he can't move. Um, he knows he knows how, he knows how to use, he knows how to use his body to get in to get in front of people. He has good hands. Um, and I, I just, I, yeah, I think he's the MVP. I, it's not a to me. It's not about any narrative. I just think he's. You said he's the best player in the NBA. And right now, and right now, yeah, I'll adjust it. He is the best player in the NBA because yeah, Joel Embiid can't. Joel Embiid looks like he's, so he's constipated thing, so at all think times. About the court he gets up for, oh, he's he gets hurt. Up he's for always hurt. Kids, but I can't make him the best player in the league if he don't do that every night. I mean, he does it every night, but... Yeah. Well, he was yeah. averaging 35 the before he got hurt. When he get to the playoff, so. between his elements and just certain nights, he looked like he, looked like he just he's don't have I, I don't. I don't get how... I don't know how... Why... I, I, he's got... You know what? You can sit here and tell me about load management. Guys get hurt today because they don't play. I believe that. They get hurt all the time because they don't play enough. They're always taking days wow. off, even when they're not hurt. It's amazing. You saw? Did you see who played 84 games Mikhail, this year? Uh, no, that wasn't Mikael. It was somebody got traded. Who was it? Was... Mikael you know, Bridges played, the, played all, was... all 82. There was someone that played who 84 games this year. I don't know who it was. I saw it briefly. Was it Buddy Hill? But Buddy Hill. Guys don't – yeah, guys don't play. And I think not playing impacts you negatively. It does. Unless you're actually hurt, there's no logical reason to not play. It just There just isn't to me. It, it, I, I cannot stand it. And um, I think Jokic is going to be the MVP again. I think he should be the MVP. Um, 
They have the second best record in the league along with, behind the Celtics. I mean, they're tied with the same record as OKC, yeah. tie breakers or whatever. I don't care about that. Second best record in the league. They're the defending champions. They're going to win the thing all over again. They're going to win. I, I I cannot see anyone beating them. What matters? Um, I'll man, take you. Man, I got the MVP, man. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Who? Yep. Get the fuck out Get the fuck out of here. Man, what he did here. with the next team that was – Decapitated by injuries and things of that nature to keep them up. Decapitated. Yeah, they, OG, they got one OG guy out. out. They got one guy um, out. He wasn't on their Randall team until half of the season. I, Rudy. Randall, Randall is still out. out. They have a the couple year. more players out. Um, they got Bo, Bojan, Bogon. As great as, as great as they were, they finished I, four games ahead of the Heat. I, I still. I, all right, maybe not MVP, but. I'm not. If you think it, it's fine, no, I, think he's, I, I think he's fabulous. I think man, he's, I he think he's unbelievable. Back. He started, but goddamn, the Miami Heat are 46 wins. They're four games from being a two seed. Yeah, the East, I mean, it was, it was all clumped together. <laughs> this year, I, I like, but I just wanted. It's very I just wanted to give a shout out to Jalen Brunson more than him being the MVP. Oh, I love Jalen Brunson. If you could, if I could man, trade he, half he my really team for my team right now, year, but I just maybe maybe I just want to give him a shout out for carrying his team when we all thought they were going to fall down to like the. Six, seven, oh, I love, I love, I love. He what literally he's started doing. scoring forty points a game, and then Shannon Sharp gets on there and says he's a, he shoots a bad field goal percentage. Like he shoots forty eight percent as a as a six feet point guard. Yeah, that's the same guy that will tell you that Juju Watkins yeah, so is the greatest like, female player okay. in college basketball. No, this guy shoots forty percent. He's putting yeah. his team on his back. He's scoring anyway. He's getting to the free throw line eight nine times a night. He's he's shooting the ball from the three point mm-hmm. line at forty percent. He's a you know. He's he's doing his thing out there in New York. Shout out to them, man. Shout out to New York, man. Who's the who's who's the, who's the rookie of the year? Come on, Wemby, your Wemby. mom. Uh, Wemby. I, I mean, it's amazing. The guy can be the rookie of the year, winning twenty two games. Wemby, um, Wemby is the MVP. I think no, he gets to play the year also. I think he is. Too, yeah, they're gonna give it to Gobert. Uh, they're gonna give it to Gobert again. Yeah, Gobert. Yeah, Gobert. I don't um, but. Yeah, I, I mean, somebody said yeah, he doesn't I, play in the play. I've been said that. I said, how can he be a defensive player of the year when the playoffs time coming around? He can't play. Well, because because it doesn't. It's not I based know, on the playoffs. Right. That's so. awesome. Well, who, who said that? No, Draymond Green said some shit like that. I think. But no, Draymond, Draymond Green. No, Draymond home, so said okay. that that um, Wemby can't get it because their defense is one of the worst defenses in the league. But when Wemby's on the court, they have one of the best wow. defenses in the league. I mean, he's yes, really bad when he's not. That's how third. bad, it, and he only played like twenty nine minutes a game. So, the mo- who, who's the most improved player? Kobe White. Kobe White. What? Mm-hmm. Kobe White. Yeah. With the Bulls, that kid's been phenomenal this year, man. Go really look at him. Man. He's averaging huh? nineteen. Yeah. He's averaging nineteen. What did he do last he's year? Because we are at fifteen like minutes that. now. Jesus. But he really. Fit that uh, what what did he average last year? Uh, stats. Our moderator won't like this episode because we're yeah, taking we're fucking good, forever. Good. Okay, he averaged huh? ten points a game last year. Wow, well, he averaged ten. No, last really double double. This year became like I. I, like, I was going to say game, five three. I, yeah. I I was gonna uh, shit. That's hard to argue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? I, uh, I was thinking between uh, Halliburton and uh, mm. Maxi. I think Maxi already had it. I just um, thought that that Harden. No, I mean, did he I have mean it? no, I mean, I did think he, he already had the game. He was that guy. I don't think he was most improved. I just think he just got the ball in his hand more than he had last year with dealing with Harden having the ball in his hand. Well, I think. He, I mean, he, he went. He, he went from last at, year. What was he should have had the ball more last year, but you know, Harden get paid what he get paid and. I, he averaged 17 and a half last year. He's averaging 26 a game. This, no, I'm sorry. He averaged 20 last year. He averaged 20. Eh, Kobe White, eh, I'll, I'll agree with you. I'll, I'll agree with you. So now that we've talked about the NBA, who's your uh, NBA champion? Who's oh. going to the finals? Real quick before we go. Nuggets, so Celtics. Move on. Winner. Nuggets. Repeat. I I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um. With that said, we uh, yeah, we I'm gonna let go. I ain't even gonna go to the, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Nuggets Celtics. What? I got Nuggets Celtics. Nuggets win. Repeat. Um, real, 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 real complicated. 
going on to the WNBA draft. We had it on a We're just getting Monday on, ta- on on tax day, and it was the most watched WNBA draft why. in history. Um, yeah, we wonder why it, it had 2.4 million viewers, which was uh, nine. Uh, what was that? Nine nine times less than Kaylin Clark drew in the national championship game. Um, <laughs> Nine times less than she drew the national championship game, which tells you right there that the WNBA still doesn't still have as much interest. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> look, look, I, look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm messing around. I, 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 I thought it's great I'm for them. I, I, some of the outfits. I'm sitting here I'm like I, I don't know. Like I don't know what. The, I don't know what the deal is with some of these outfits. Like, don't say you don't want certain attention, and then wear certain things that draw attention. I'm not going to name names. Let we're women talk actually about. be women. Um. Let be what hey cool but don't cry when someone says you're hot don't cry when someone says certain things and men say certain I mean, things because that's how men are they're, they're looking making, at you first they're making money huh? off of men thinking that of course they are good. exactly they're, they're it's, it's, it's all fucking bullshit like if don't if you're crying about that you can't cry so about it and then sell yourself if your game can match said. you looking like a, as a beautiful woman let's <laughs> let's keep it real if your game can match you looking as a beautiful woman in today's world with um, so much social media things that you can get paid for and so much. <laughs> and I'm not even saying I'm I, and the worst outfit to me. wasn't even the one that you're thinking, I'm thinking the, the, the outfit that was more revealing than all of them was uh, Cameron Brink. I, no, I like her. I like her. Outfit. Go look at that. Outfit. Outfit. Well, I, ain't, I ain't there at Cameron Brink at all. It, it, it looked more like you're getting dressed to go to a gala. I mean, hey, a, 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 a sexy him, gala. Because <laughs> that thing him, was all the way up to her hip. <laughs> the four feet of legs that she got. <laughs> she threw it all out. I'll say, okay, <laughs> Cameron Brink. All right, man. I think her, I think her legs right, are taller than both of us. I ain't mad at it. Well, let's, well, let's, 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 let's talk about it real quick. Like, they take advantage of, of you being a beautiful woman because, you know, you're in the you're in the, like the three yeah, percent. So take advantage of it, make your money <laughs> off of that thing, but also bring bring your <laughs> game up it. to par with you, you know, being a beautiful woman. Because now you can maximize the money that you're gonna make off of that. And don't cry about it, because when you're getting paid millions and millions by sponsors, that's gonna throw you money, and you out here on TV commercials for hair products and things in that nature. Embrace it, because then you bring. Because imagine if Skylar Diggins was in this day and age. <laughs> Even um, damn, Candace, even Candace She's bad. Parker, Skylar Thomas. Like, imagine them in this Ooh. day and age, like how they would have, like their, you know, their marketability would have been a lot different. And and I know I'm not trying to sexualize it or go over top, but it, it helps. It helps. But you look even for even for does. men's basketball, you being a good looking man, does. you get more benefits than. Somebody who's not because you're marketable, like somebody that put on every commercial mm-hmm. or and uh, 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 every TV screen, you know, uh, 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 show my product with your face on there. Like nobody cares about the product; they care about the person who's behind the product. Look, 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 look at who the underwear model is for. Uh, who, who, who was the one that just oh. Skims? Who's who are the underwear models for Skims for uh, Kim Kardashian? The basketball player is it? Um, is it football? Football. football. I'm a shape. Football. Nick, Bo- Nick, Nick Bosa. Wasn't that a basketball player? Wasn't it a shape? Bosa's, Bosa's, Nick, Nick, I, I know Nick Bosa is one of them. Somebody else. That's a couple of basketball um, players. Yeah, no. Shea, Shea and Chet Holmer are singing songs on T-Mobile now, which I think is weird in itself. But um, yeah, Stims, men's The men are doing underwear. it. So don't be mad about it. The men are doing it, too. Like, if you're a good-looking man, Tom Brady took advantage of being a good-looking man. Like. You know, Rudy has a crush on Tom Brady. So. Never, he, 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 he just never, he just never took yeah, a shirt. That was his thing. Um, he, got, he got a little bit of abs later on. But at first, it is Nick Bosa, Shay, yeah, right. Gildress okay. Alexander, and um, is that Usher? Yep. Yeah, Usher is one of the one. And who's this? Oh, that oh the the, the soccer player. Yeah, uh, so Neymar. take advantage of it. Don't Neymar. cry about it. Embrace it. But also. Dude, freaking Nick! 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 So, Bosa's but, a sculpture. But, but, but bring your game with, with it, because it could fall off just as quick. Because I tell people, if your game don't match it, then so let's 
Okay. Go right into something else. ESPN, Drea Carter says on first take, yesterday, I think it was, mm-hmm. after the draft. She's at, there. The question is posed. Is there any pressure on Caitlin Clark? Andrea Carter sits here. This is the same person that was taking dumps on Caitlin Clark during the tournament, by the way. Um, halfway complimenting her while halfway taking a shit on her. And, oh, by the way, Iowa just got the number three leading scorer in the country to transfer from Villanova to Iowa. She's a 5'9 point guard. Um, so that's pretty big for them. But she says, oh, she has no pressure. She's already done so much. Yeah. What do you think of she has a what do you think pressure. of that? She is she is up there with the, the likes of LeBron James. Of LeBron James coming out of out of high school to the NBA and the pressure that he had to carry the league or the mantle to keep it going. There's definitely pressure. She is she's getting everything thrown her way, whether it's hate, whether they like her or love her. Like this whole thing about us watching college women's basketball because of why it became so popular was because of Caitlin Clark. Everybody else benefited off of it. Um, Angel Reese, maybe not so much, but it definitely helped her a little bit because it became, let's keep it real, a black versus white thing between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And the women's basketball capitalized off of that. But Caitlin Clark, because of her skills, was that she can play like Steph Curry, and that's something that's appeasing to the men's eyes. It went to a whole nother stratosphere, and that would change it. So she definitely have an immense amount of pressure to carry the women's game and get them out of a deficit of losing money. It's all on her shoulders. So to say that she has no pressure, that's absolutely a lie because she's literally the one woman who could get them out of maybe a deficit and being able to do their own thing without the help of the NBA. It's on her shoulders to do that. Angel Reese, you told me so that what do you think Angel Reese is a needle mover. She's not a needle mover like Caitlin Clark. Because, let me keep it real, the African-American fan base, they love Angel Reese, even without knowing her game that well. I'm going to keep it real because I'm a realist. Her game needs a little bit of work, but if her game could get up there and, and and then they could maximize her and Caitlin and Caitlin in the in the WNBA. That's like Larry Bird and, and Magic in the NBA. Rose because of that. Because of the African American thing versus the white thing. It's a thing. Let's keep it real. It's a thing in the world. Let's keep it real. Now if Angel Reese Gang can get on that level with her fans coming with her, it could be a huge thing for the WNBA. And the weight won't be so much on Caitlyn's shoulder. It could be also on Angel Reese's shoulder. But if she don't bring her game up, it will just be on Caitlyn. Because she is the person that everybody came to watch. Because she's that polarized. Let's keep it real. So Caitlyn Clark's <laughs> yeah. jersey in Indiana sold out within an hour of when she was drafted. An hour. They're talking about now the season opening ticket for the Indiana Fever courtside seat is running for $2,400. And the, while the Pacers playoff game is running for $1,200. We have to temper ourselves though, because I'm a humongous yes. Caitlin Clark fan, but we've got to temper this stuff. This is the beginning. This is the excitement. This is the rah, rah, woohoo, all that what? good stuff. For someone to say, she has no pressure. That's asinine. It's insane. She has the pressure yeah. of the world Look. on her. If she does not perform, everything that's been talked it about ends. It goes down the drain. So you're going to get the one year of the excitement of the LeBron James in Miami thing where we had it for four years here where tickets were sold out. You couldn't get a ticket. It was the most expensive ticket on the block. They fired all the ticket salespeople because they couldn't sell tickets because there were no tickets to sell. Okay. There were no tickets to sell for four years for the Miami Heat when LeBron was here. So you had no need for a sales team. You don't have any tickets to sell. All that said, she has to perform. If she averages six points a game, 
it's going to be a problem. And it's going to be a problem because the people who were watching her in mm-hmm. college are going to stop watching. I don't care what they say. They will stop watching. Let's be honest. Honesty is a big problem when it comes to the WNBA. And then on top of that, the WNBA is trying so hard to maximize the Caitlin Clark fever because this is really what it is. They should, but they're trying so hard that they're looking way too far down the line. This crap where they're announcing about adding four more teams in the next couple of years, including one of them potentially in Miami. Are you nuts? You are a league that makes no money. You're losing money for 27 years. And guess what? And guess they're not going. And guess what? They're still the league is still gonna lose money this year. It's not gonna make money. One team will make money. Indiana. Everyone else is going to still lose money. Maybe the Aces will break even. Chicago, Maybe they'll team, break yeah. even. But For let's stop. Hype. A little bit of hype. Ah, no, they and won't. Fan, ah, they're, not, they're not. Chicago's big city but shit, man. Indiana. Indiana is not nothing else. Who will be watching that first. I don't know how long will be. Bro, they're not going to sell 19,000 mm-hmm. seats. They're not going to sell 19,000 seats to go see Angel Reese miss layups. I don't care. I don't care what freaking video they put on fucking social media showing her shoot a left-handed jump shot from her elbow here, and it goes in in that one that gym in New York that seemingly everyone goes to play basketball in. I watched Ben Simmons well, make that, that shot layup, in that gym. Cardoso, Cardoso will be on the other but when side. She misses the, the, what? <laughs> yeah, great. So let's watch a volleyball. You know what? And that'll be the slowest fucking Angel, team on earth. You got two big... You're gonna so so you better have some shooters. You better have some shooters because they're not gonna be able to get to the basket because there's two big ass girls Memphis, standing in the lane the whole Memphis, game. Grizzlies, they're not gonna move. Basketball, baby. It worked. It, you, it, it ain't gonna work in the WNBA the way people think. Uh, you know, Cardoso's not gonna have six foot one people guarding her. Um, she's yeah, gonna have cute. Asia Wilson guarding her Ooh. and other six foot six girls who will beat her down the floor who are so much more skilled than she is. They're going to, they're, they're going to, if people look, I think they can make it if they improve, but if they, if they think that their game of what it looked like in college will translate, throwing the ball off the backboard to yourself will not translate the same. Making three point mm-hmm. shots typically translates. You can shoot, you can shoot. Shooting doesn't go away. If you can dribble, you can dribble. Dribbling doesn't go away. If you can pass, you can pass. But if you can't, if you think that you're just, you're Let's, just going to muscle people. I mean, it, Angel it Reese's game fell off a little now, bit this year, and was it because of the her numbers went down? Of all the they things that she was doing off the court. It, it like oh, she didn't put in, what is that? No, is, are those like excuses? She the work that she are needed to put in. She went from like she definitely put in the like work. She definitely put in the work. She was under 50%. Under 50%. I know that. In, the, in, the, in college basketball. Mm-hmm. I hope that it does because I, 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 do I want think it. that I thoroughly would love to see her and Caitlin rivalry keep going for the women. Caitlin yes. Clark has the pressure of the world, in my opinion. I think I think she'll I think she'll I think she'll be great. But to say that she has no pressure, it's like so. What do you do? If it's like LeBron when he came in the league, if LeBron had come in the league and averaged two points a game, like you, he named himself King James. You can't name yourself something. And then and then suck, like you can't be the greatest in the world and or in the country in your class and, and, that, and then suck. Like you you can't. Not that not was at a point to where carry the where mantle. Jordan had just retired again. Had just left. They needed a new person. Kobe, Kobe was doing a thing. Kobe uh, and, and, and in Shaq, this case, you know. yeah, Kobe was still not the guy yet. He just like, he was like he was still one A. Because one, he was still one. He was still one. Was going through it. Two thousand three to four. Oh, really? And they lost to... Uh... Yeah. Well, well oh, yeah. then Kobe lost so he, for a few years. Yeah. He lost for they a few years. They need a little bit of They need a new juice. They need a new, they need a new flavor uh, to keep the league going and, and keep it going. But you want to add a team to Miami? I, I don't think people understand the market. Like, this is where I... I, I someone made a comment to me on our on our, on our on the post, and I said... How are you going to add a, add franchises to a league that loses money? You don't add franchises when you're losing money. Let alone 
if one of those places is Miami, so, we had a team for three years. They shut down because they played with black curtains around so the fucking arena. That just goes back. They were they were playing in front of five hundred people. Goes back to the point of the pressure being on Caitlyn because they're adding because they think that she's gonna. But she's but if you're gonna do this, you have to do it in an intellectual. Why in an intellectual way? Why would you even consider Miami among the teams? People <laughs> not, don't go to Heat games. The Heat, the Heat season, the Heat season tickets are sold go. out. Granted, but there's still five thousand empty seats at every single game. If you go on Friday, there'll be five thousand empty seats, even with the the, the playing on the line, because no one's going to care mm-hmm. until we're actually in the playoffs. You know, and 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 so. You have you have the Dolphins who before we got Tyree killed down here were playing in front of twenty thousand empty seats. The Hurricanes have been playing in front of twenty thousand empty seats for the last twenty years. Um, the, the Marlins play in front of five thousand people. You can buy a ticket for five dollars to sit row three. This no, is not a no. sports town. Yeah, this is an event so city. You- the Pan- the Florida Panthers are the best team in in South Florida. The Florida Panthers will fill up their building. Why? Because they're goddamn good. They're they're contenders to win and, the cup again hockey, this year. And the arena doesn't hold that and they're, as much. And hockey. And the arena doesn't hold as huh? 19 K? Holds 19. Hold oh. 19, 20,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a big arena. It holds still holds, but it's because no, they're no, winning, because no. when they were losing, nobody went. You, I went to the Marlins game a few weeks ago. You could have dropped a match, a king size mattress before across the, last, the entire the last deck. couple of years of the a- Panthers like getting on their shit. You really didn't hear about it since what that was ninety seven when we went to the, the I guess the uh, Colorado Avalanche forever ago ninety six when we went to college. Yeah, yeah, it was been forever ago. It's it's been forever ago. So you, if you're gonna talk about putting it in Miami, I don't know where the hell you're gonna play because mm-hmm. you're not playing at the Caseya Center. You better be playing at Nova Southeastern or something in front of a 3,000 seat building because you're not going to put a thousand people in there. I don't care what you think. I don't care who Caitlin Clark is. Maybe that one game will draw a big crowd, but every other game will draw nobody. And we have to stop lying to ourselves. They're better. They're, they're better off going to smaller cities than going to big cities. But what do I know? I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, no. I don't think Miami's the right place for another for a women's basketball. You did it already. It failed. It failed. Why is the why is inner why is Miami F inner um the the soccer team Miami FC inner Miami whatever it is because why are they successful the best now? player in the world who has exactly and the It'll second he leaves there'll be three thousand people there because I went to one of their games before he got here the place was freaking three quarters empty. Three quarters empty. The second he got here, the tickets were freaking jacked up the room by jacked up the prices by by five thousand percent. So, I, I congratulate all the women who got drafted. Um, I do think that that situation in Chicago will be fun, to, uh, interesting to see the volleyball that they play, like Memphis with uh, Cardoso and, and Reese mm-hmm. throwing the ball back off the backboard to each other <laughs> to see if that works in the WNBA. I don't know that it will, but. Um, you know, we 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 shall uh, see. Oh yeah, you got you, people don't like your nine foot rim idea. Um, it seems like, and some people like your hard the the, the hard wood idea, the reality show. But uh, your your nine foot thing. Yeah, I don't. I I don't. Uh, you know, I looked up some stuff because the shooting percentage in the WNBA is actually still three percent lower than the NBA, and that's with a smaller ball. It's fine. You want to know why men? You want to know why men don't watch? There's your answer. For many, from well, they, they shoot Facebook under forty percent from mid range. And the argument was, you no, know, it got into like, oh, somebody was like, is Andrew Reese really that good? And I broke it down, whatever, whatnot. So somebody else was like, so I was like, the women don't support women. It's just they were like, so women don't typically watch sports. Why should they support it? Why aren't men watching? I say because it's not appealing to the men's eyes of what the men can actually do. They're like, oh, but all the hype became now. I said, yes, because of one person who plays like one of the greatest shooters on the men's side. That's why the hype came. The other hype became because of Angel Reese and the African-American community loving her 
And then the whole thing went against Caitlin Clark because they played against each other. So it was, a, it was an African American black versus white thing, and that kind of popped that off. Now let's keep it real. That's what had happened. But Caitlin Gang got men like, damn, that's crazy. Nobody else gang really has men saying that. And that's why we're not watching as much. But women who ask for support for everything, why aren't y'all watching? I heard, I seen a couple women come on the post because it's boring. <laughs> it's like NBA Globe, like it's something that I just don't care to watch. There you go. How you gonna? How you gonna? We, why we, why we, would we, you want to force a man to watch this. it if y'all are not gonna watch it? Yeah. We talked. We talked about this last. I mentioned this last week. How do you expect a man to watch a sport that you won't watch? How will you? Why would? Why would you expect some other another gender to support your sport when the gender of who that sport is will not watch that same sport? Like th- th- mm-hmm. it's it's an unfair expectation. I see somebody, you can't like, ask a man oh, who, they who, it on women again. I say like you right, can't okay. ask. I say. I say that. no. The, the the statistics are very very simple. Eighty five percent of men watch men's basketball, the NBA, and in women's basketball, the WNBA, fifty percent of the viewers are men. Why isn't that number eighty five percent for women? It should be eighty five percent. You don't support your own gender. You don't. You the, the feminists of America should be watching women's <laughs> basketball <does>. more than anybody, <laughs> just because you're women. My mom loves tennis. My mom preferred, I'll tell you flat out, I love tennis. I would rather watch women's tennis over men's tennis any day of the week. And I'll tell you why. It's more competitive. Watching men serve 140 miles per hour and the ball can't get returned half the time, it it, it gets boring. Whereas in women's game, they don't serve as fast, as hard. So there's a lot more rallies. Rallies Mm -hmm. make the game fun to watch. If there's no rallies, if I'm watching six, it's, 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 you know, seven, six, sir, yeah, if I'm watching a seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, but it's because it's an ace, 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 and you can't return the ball, like, I, I don't want to watch that. It's not entertaining. Now, there are some men's players that I do want to watch that are enjoyable to watch. Look, I'm I'm back in the day type of guy from Andre Agassi and Stefan Edberg and, and, and Pete Sampras and those guys, and, and big, and, and that was a lot of fun, but I mean, Shoot, those guys couldn't stand a chance against these guys that played like Federer and 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 Novak Yoko, <laughs> Novak uh, Djokovic, um, and, and, you know the other, the other Joker. Um, <laughs> I call oh, him the Joker too because that's what his name is, Yo- Joker, Jovac, whatever. Fuck, I don't care. Um, and then, um, and Rafa, um, Rafael Nadal, um, like those guys are incredible, and they and they serve 135 miles an hour. You know, returning that serve is damn near impossible if they put it at the proper spot. You can't return it. Um, would I rather? But but don't ask me to sit here and watch bad basketball, and th- and and like we'll don't sit here and don't don't piss we'll on me tennis. and it's tell me it's raining. They're going back and forth. Don't take a piss on me and tell me it's I raining. It. Naomi, don't do that. Going at it. Like I'm... don't do it. I'll I'll watch women's soccer. I will. I'll watch the U.S. women's national team, even if I don't agree with some of the political bullshit that they do. But I'll watch them. Because it's still good among other among women, but am I expecting that level of play to be like men? No, a high school team beat the U.S. Women's National Team. High school, a high school Dallas fifteen and under team beat the U.S. Women's National Team in soccer. Not a freaking national fifteen and under team. A local fifteen U team beat the greatest woman in the world in a soccer game. The same way I I, I said that if Montverde played the Las Vegas. Fuck the aces. Put the best 12 women together and they can play Montverde and Montverde would beat it by 70. Yeah. Because Montverde's playing above the rim. Oh my God. And they're playing below the rim. This this show would go on. It would be a murder job. It would be a murder job. And every time I hear women get offended, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm telling you the truth. These guys are in the MB. These guys at Montverde are in the NBA in two years. Caitlin Clark. Could play in the NBA? She oh was God, four. She get murdered. Six, like, stop. Six feet. She, she wouldn't has score. A vertical, and she can't move laterally, and she can't push Dude, off a like, man stop. to get her shot off. 
It's like, stop. It, it, it's it's like, ungodly frustrating. And no, look, no, it's, it's not, not about, about a disrespect, disrespect for women. I respect what women do. No, but people take it that level, way constantly. It's, it's like, level. you're not, you don't understand the sport. Your Norlin high school team would beat the Aces by 30 or 40. Who the hell on that team could guard Zach Peacock? Nobody. Who could handle six foot ten, two hundred ninety pound boozer down below? Nobody. And don't even get me into the 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 speed of their guard play. It doesn't match. Columbus High School would smoke everybody in the WNBA. Smoke them, and it's not personal. Go, don't sit here and tell me the level is so high. No, it's not. These guys are NBA pros in two no, years. I, I, I didn't know. I mean, in two you know, years. I and I'm a I would, fan, I would but tell I'm like, you the top. Y'all are, y'all are pushing bro, too far. The top, the top 500, 500 boys basketball teams in high school would beat the stuffing out of every WNBA team by at oh, least I don't know 25 that. points. The top five teams? 500? 500? Top 500. Dude, top 500. Go look at who's on those top 500 teams. <laughs> Remember, we have a lot um, more than 500 high school basketball teams. You uh, have 500 in Florida alone. I mean, more than that. Who, give me your seven. Give me the seven state champions that just won in Florida. Columbus. Norland. Riviera Prep. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Not, not. There are some whoever. Good, there are some W. Whoever. That could, that could. Bro, Sierra Canyon, uh, dude, come on, man. The, 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 the Matter Day, man. like these, uh, Paul the Sixth out of Virginia, this, Prolific Prep, uh, all these different Link, the Link Academy, La Lumere, like these teams would absolutely smoke them. And it's not personal. Yeah. People don't understand how, how good, good these high school boys are. And they're, they're and unbelievable. Even when they won't make up for like this IQ part. They make up with their lettuce. <laughs> and don't dare tell me that the six foot four Asia Wilson or six five Asia Wilson is no, stronger than a six eleven high school no, senior. No. Like stop it, a it's six one, eleven two hundred thirty five pound high school yeah, senior. Like give year. me a break. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the dude, the dude from Montverde is a, is the number one pick in the draft next year if he could go to the NBA draft. Right. Whatever the fuck, I forgot his damn name. <laughs> like, like he would be in the NBA. He'd be the number one pick in the draft. We've gone so far over time because Don's not here to reel us in. This is Don's fault. I, you know, Don, this is your fault. You 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 left us here on our own. Um. That said, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna post all this stuff so you guys can oh, tell me that I'm an idiot. God. But I've seen hey. tons of videos where I've listened to guys. I've listened to guys say, oh, they're so good. Man, bro, you have never watched high school basketball a day in your life. If you think, if you think a team of women who are under six foot five, where the starting guard is as tall as the starting center, <laughs> it's gonna be that team. Like, stop it. There's a reason why that guy Clay Travis offered a million dollar bet to do it, and no women's team said yes. Cause they know the answer. This isn't. This isn't Creator no, no. League bullshit on YouTube. Like, let's stop acting. This is Creator League bullshit. It's not. And I'm not. Yeah, in a no defense world where no one guards anybody. Sure. I'm not. We're, we're not going to dive into that sure. topic today. You know how I feel about that no defense thing. Come on, man. The no, no, no. I'm talking about the no oh, defense, okay. like in the oh. Creator Leagues. They don't oh, play defense. Oh, oh, yeah. In the YouTube world, the YouTube. The YouTube ballers that all think they're the greatest things on earth and none of them play professional ball? Bro, you're playing on YouTube. No offense. I just watched the Creator League thing where DeMarcus Cousins literally scored every single point for his Creator League team. He was playing against Paul Pierce, and Paul Pierce was like, I can't guard this guy. He's still too damn big. And you know where DeMarcus Cousins was shooting mm-hmm. from? 27 feet out. Wow. Biggest think guy on the floor shooting 27 footers. <laughs> How good that guy is. <laughs> Come on. So that said, we're going to jump into the left. favorite topic of the day. For me, I do. I mean, I ran way too long here, and we have to probably chop some of this stuff down, and I won't be able to really talk about I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it quick. 
we're going to stick to the WNBA draft and the comments that I've been hearing from people all over or reading. I'm going to say hearing because I don't know these people, but reading. As you saw, the WMA NBA draft just took place on Monday. And the first thing that you started seeing from people posted all over the internet was their salaries. Oh my God, they make no money. Their salaries are so bad. Guess what? Salaries are commensurate to revenue. If you don't make money, you don't get paid the same amount of money that the, the NBA players make. The Los Angeles Lakers as a team generate $500 million in revenue. The entire WNBA generated $216 million in revenue. They lost money. How do you expect to pay players when the league is losing money? The league has lost money for 27 straight years. And the comedy that happens when I hear these comments, and I read, I'm like, here, I, I read it. I saw it on the internet. I saw people posting these little memes and all that stuff. But then I listened to people actually speaking over this stuff where they're saying, this is so unfair. I didn't know that yeah. they didn't make this money. <laughs> really? You, you, you didn't know? Why, why, why didn't you know? I know why you didn't know. You didn't know because you don't watch the WNBA, you fucking cr you clowns. You don't watch the league. You don't even pay attention to it. You've never paid attention to it. The only reason you're paying attention right now is because you watched Caitlin Clark for two weeks or three weeks. Because in the first week of the NCAA tournament, how many people watched that game? Two million. It was the highest rated first round game ever for a, a women's March Madness game. And how many people watched her second round game? Four million, 4.3. Again, the highest rated second round game ever in women's NCAA history. And then who watched her third game? I think it did what? Uh, it was the uh, Sweet 16. I think it did what? 8 million. And uh, it was the highest rated game ever for the, the Elite Eight for women. And who, she played in the Elite Eight. That, that was the Sweet 16. The Elite Eight. That was Angel Reese. She played for all 12.2 or 12.3 million. Again, the highest rated women's game ever at the time. And then. She plays UConn, 14.2 million. She breaks it again. And then what happens in the championship? 18.7 million. She breaks it again. If you remove her from the equation, nobody watched the tournament. You watched her for a month, and now you're sitting here acting like you're some fucking expert on women's basketball. The WNBA makes no money. And if you actually had been watching and supporting a league you're crying about, maybe they would make money. Maybe you, the individuals that I've seen all over the internet, primarily women, for example, because they're the ones that are complaining more than anyone. I'm sorry, does, ladies. I love you all. I love all of he you. Does. But cut the fucking bullshit. Cut the bullshit. You don't watch the game, and then you're complaining about their salaries. There is an in there, there used to be. There used to be. I'm not saying there, there might not still be in certain situations. There used to be a pay inequity in this country amongst men and women. It is a lot. Not if, if it still exists, it's like this now. It's not like this. It's like this. This is not a pay inequity issue. Yeah. This is a revenue issue. The league doesn't make money. The league, the league has lost money forever. The fact that they're going to make $80,000 to play in front of 6,000 people to me is pretty fucking good. Sorry. You don't like it? Go play in Europe. They do. Go play in Russia. They pay more. They pay more. You don't have to, you don't have to play in the WNBA. In women's basketball, the teams in Europe pay more money. Why? Because the place is packed. They make profit. You've seen the videos of uh, men's basketball games in Croatia and Serbia that that Jokic used to talk about, like pre pressure. I played in Cro I played in Serbia. They're lighting fireworks in the arena. They have smoke bombs going on during the game. They have flags flying around everywhere. It's a fucking riot. Mm -hmm. Places are packed, but those guys don't make the bread that these guys make over here. Why? Because this league, it's all based on television revenue. You want your you want the women to get paid? Guess what? Watch their games. Watch. Support them. Buy jerseys. Don't ask me and don't ask Nick to go buy jerseys, ladies. You go buy jerseys. I'll be damned if you ever see me wearing a female basketball mm -hmm. jersey. No offense. I'll never do it. I'll never buy a woman's basketball jersey. 
You can call me a sexist pig. I don't give a shit. You know how many jerseys I got? I got Miami Heat jerseys. That's it. That's my team. I got Jimmy Butler and I got Dwayne Wade. Mm-hmm. I think I have one Bam Adebayo jersey too that I bought like seven years ago that I've never worn before. It still has a tag on it. It literally, has, it literally still has the tag on it. I don't buy jerseys. I've never bought a LeBron James jersey. I have not bought a Steph Curry jersey. And Steph Curry's one of my favorite players. My favorite player of all time is Larry Bird. I don't have a Larry Bird jersey. But you want the women to get paid? Support them. Watch them play. Buy their jerseys. Buy concessions. Don't sit here and bitch and moan about their fucking pay and sit here and say it's inequity and unfair. It's not inequity. It's not unfair. You don't watch. Nobody watches. That's why they don't get paid. Nobody watches them play. All of a sudden, Caitlin Clark is here and now, uh, oh boy, yeah, they're not paid well. Yeah, you and you didn't, but you say you didn't know that. Well, you didn't know that. Yeah. You didn't know that because you have you obviously don't watch. If you if you watched, you'd know it. I don't even watch the WNBA really, and yet I know it. So how the hell do I know it? But you ladies who are yakking away on social media with the memes and all this crap and crying about paying equity, why don't you know it? It helps to educate yourself. <laughs> like, I don't know what business. It's like the idea of opening a fucking, uh, starting another franchise in Miami. Go ahead, do it. It's closed in three years. It won't survive. It won't survive. You know how many professional soccer teams have, have shut down in South Florida in our lifetime, Nick? A bunch. I remember we lost the Miami Fusion a year yeah. after they went to the, the the play the semifinals of the of this like the the MLS semis. They had the best record in the league in the in, in the regular season, and they went to the MLS semis. And a year later, they were they were gone. Nobody went to games. How do you expect teams to? How do you expect these people to get paid if they don't go to games? Quite frankly, you know semi pro teams mm-hmm. like those guys pay to play. Realistically, the WNBA players are lucky they're not being asked to pay to play because I'll be damned if I'm losing money on this proposition because of some agenda by the NBA that we have to do this. No, in no world would a 27-year financial loss still be in business. In no world. <laughs> it's the worst business decision on earth. And you're sitting here crying about their freaking pay? Caitlin because Clark. you watched three weeks of Caitlin Clark? Angel Reed, too. I don't I don't know how many people are gonna watch the, the NFL draft next week. I hate it. I, I think the draft is the most boring shit on earth Hold personally. Watched it. For your team to pick I, I don't know how people do it. <laughs> Sit there for six, seven <laughs> hours, your team have draft one parties pick. for one pick. You're not even watching oh my god. And time, you, and, you wait, and and I don't I and, and tell and, and tell me why it takes 15 minutes per pick or 10 minutes per pick. God damn, you had six months to make this decision. It should be a five-minute situation. If you can't make a decision, you should get skipped. So you just pick the next person. We already know, we already know what's going to happen. J.J. McCarthy will be the number one pick in the draft. By now here, boy. <laughs> He'll be the number one pick in the draft by next, by next Thursday. But again... You want these women to get paid? Message. Support them. In fact, the reality is, go look at the demographics yeah. of our country. So the only- it's more women than men. Go watch them play. Only men no like one's sports, stopping though. you That's why except we you. Be uh, yeah, I'm supposed to watch golf. I'm supposed to watch badminton. I'm supposed to watch ping pong. I, I mean, ping pong's pretty cool. Um, those guys do some crazy shit in ping pong. Um that's in the crazy. I mean, there's one now that now there's a kickball yeah. like over over a we like a ping pong table where I see them kicking the ball over the table. Like this is insane. Ottawa, yeah. yeah, we we built a little <laughs> kicking the ball. We built a little net over there in Ottawa, and it's called Bud Ball. And wow. it would be two one one v one or two wow. versus two. And you have to kick the ball over the net, basically like volleyball, like. And that shit yeah. used to go off. Like every time we had special teams meeting them, and we like players who wasn't on special, you go in there and you go, you go at it for like fucking twenty minutes. You broke a sweat before practice, and now you get to practice. You tired, but it was called Bud Ball. Shout out Greg Ellison and 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 uh, damn, what's my guy name? Oh man, shit, one of the best tight ends out there. Well, not tight ends. It was a receiver. Damn, 
man, this whole Ottawa team, man, we won a championship in 2016, but Bud Ball was lit. We basically played soccer over over a volleyball net. It was kind of like, man, one of the best. Oh, my gosh. Games, but, the best fun. Is, that. I How said, many sports can we league. watch? And now look at him like, damn. We had how many sports can we watch, Nick? I can't watch. I won't have a wife if I'm watching know, sports literally from the moment I wake up to when I go to sleep. I don't know and how I you have, have a job. Now. Huh? You do. I mean, and I watch a ton. Like, that's what I do. Like, I spent, I spent eight hours watching oh, UFC Lord. 300 on Saturday. Like, from 6 o'clock till almost 2 o'clock in the morning, I was glued behind this TV while there were other sports on the other TVs above. Mm-hmm. So I am a sports fanatic. Yep. I'm a junkie. So when everyone, everyone, when everyone calls me, some people make comments of you're a casual fan. Yes. No, I'm a, I'm a rabid yeah. psychopath fan. So you're crazy. 100%. I watch this shit religiously, but I, but don't expect me to go watch the WNBA now. I'll watch Caitlin Clark's first game on the 14th of May, presuming I'm not in the hospital with my wife giving birth. But if she's giving birth and we're still there, then I'll watch it while I'm sitting there. I watched a UFC event when my first kid was born at a hospital. Dead serious. I believe. You. I watched Rashad Evans against Phil Davis on on Fox Television at Broward Hospital when my first son was born. He was born in the morning. The fight was at night. I'm like, I got nothing else to do. I'm watching the fight. I mean, my wife, my ex wife was sleeping. Like whatever. Like, <laughs> but that said, like, if you want these women to get paid, ladies of America, you are more. You are a majority of the population. Okay. Support All your right. women. Support them. I'm gonna wrap that. Watch up. them play and buy their jerseys. That's up for uh, that's it for uh, Rudy's rant. Um, that got, Nick, give me your picks. We man. couldn't post because we don't know what happened. So we're gonna yeah, we're not gonna bro. stay so long. Yeah. And that might happen again. Um, my pick this week, man. We're gonna go baseball, man. We're gonna go with Yariel Rodriguez versus um the San Diego Padres. Him and his two forty five ERA. And, and Toronto's been playing well. You're a They've beat the Yankees a couple times. I know. You know <laughs> They, I know Rudy. Well, we won, that. we won today, man. Um, they've been, Toronto's been playing well lately. They scored four um, in the ninth inning. Picked them over the Padres game. on Friday, and then we're gonna pick um the Pelicans money line over the Sacramento Kings to win that mm-hmm. game. We're just gonna do a two teamer this week. Yariel mm-hmm. okay. and the Toronto, um, and then we're gonna go with um like I said, this is what I'm doing. I don't, I don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm telling y'all what to do. Um, Gamblers and Anonymous right. is up there. Um, yeah, I had a I had a seven fight yeah. parlay on Saturday again, in the UFC hey. fight, and I hey. only got five of the seven that our, came through. So our moderator lost. isn't here. So Rudy didn't even know I was going to do this. But I'm going to take Don Dimes this week. And I'm just doing something off the top of the oh, head to Rudy. I kind of ran past Rudy this week. He was like, we shouldn't do it. But I'm still going to throw it at him anyway. Tom Brady. I don't remember. He's kind of interested. Oh, he will today. be interested in coming back to football, maybe. It's just out there. He threw it out there. If you're the Miami Dolphins, Rudy is a Miami Dolphins fan. I heard. And with Tua contract situation and your belief in Tua, would you let? Would you not give Tua his contract None. and bring Tom Brady in for one year and scrap the whole Tua situation, let Tom Brady run the team for this year in hopes of winning the Super Bowl? And then go find another quarterback, or he just knows Tom Brady. No, no now I'm. Okay, you, you, you Don, adjusted what Don you said, Don. so that's a little different. Next time, you Nick adjusted Cole. it. You adjust. In theory, in theory, in in if if Tua was staying, the answer is no. Yeah, you're not. But if you're, you're talking about dumping contact. Tua, and yeah, and not keeping, I'm not going to pay Tua, and I'm going to bring Tom. <laughs> You would do it and get, yeah, I and get Tom mind. Brady to come in here and be a yeah. Dolphin quarterback I at would. the age of 45 or something? For one year. 46? I don't I don't for one year. He's 46 now. He's so the same age as me, NFL, so he's 40, he's 40, 47 in September. He can stand upright and make all the reads and things of that nature because the league has gotten a little bit soft. What, what, what changed so from you, last year to this year for him? Cool. Nothing. He threw. He threw for so five. Not, he threw for five thousand yards. So what you're saying that his last is, year with the no Bucks. To get the the big I have no. I, I have no. I have no belief in Tua whatsoever. And I, you know what? To a, to, I'm agreeing with Rudy oh, on no, this thing no. right here, just because. I um, I don't. And I'm not a one to give up on quarterbacks so early, but 
I just don't see Tua with a with the weapons that he had of not being able to get his offense rolling against the Chiefs, even though the weather was bad. But if you give Tom Brady, Tyreek Evans, Waddle, and the running back. Tyreek Hill? Tyreek Evans. Evans or Hill? <laughs> Evans played Sorry, basketball. my bad, Sacramento Kings, baby. I know y'all had a you know tough time after his rookie of the year year he had. Um, Tyreek Hill uh-huh. and, and Waddle with the running back crew that he had. Hmm. If you can't get it done with those guys, with the best receiver in the league and the the offensive genius that Matt Daniels is supposed to be, maybe he don't have a little all the trust in Tua like he proclaims to have, and you can't get it done. Maybe I'll let Tom Brady rock and roll for one year. What what can the worst scenario happen as a Dolphins fan? We don't win another Super Bowl for the fortieth, fifty year in a row. <laughs> I'm going with Tom Brady, and I'm gonna let him rock and roll over Nothing. here. I'm giving the keys to the to the Lamborghini because we definitely have some speed over here to go to zero to sixty in two seconds. <laughs> I completely, yeah. If you're yeah, talking from a perspective of getting so, rid of Tua to bring Brady in for a year, yeah, right exactly. now you're gonna give him fifty million. Yeah, I, I, no, no, if no. you're bringing him to compete no, with Tua, I, I, yeah, no, uh, no. Well, that's the I, I thing don't want. I don't even want to pay like, Tua. Okay, I want to let Tua go. Yeah, yeah, if you gave me, and I did see that Tom Brady had recently said that. I'm sitting here like, this guy really. I, I, I was. I hated Tom Brady as a younger person. I loved him as an older person because I can mm-hmm. relate to him as a, at, at that age level, not the skill level because I couldn't play football like that. That, and I'm definitely not a quarterback, but. I can relate to that guy who's like, yo, this guy's 45 and he's dusting these 25 year olds. It's like, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's cause they, they, they retired yeah. him in 2013. If you remember, they were ready to get rid of him in New England. Bill Belichick was mm-hmm. looking to dump his ass when he, when he drafted Jimmy Garoppolo. And all he did was win three more Super Bowls in New England and then win again in Tampa in his first year. I mean, he, he's unbelievable. He, he's, he's a brilliant mind of football. And, and when you listen to him talk football, it's it's just it's so refreshing. You know, you have such an educated intellectual playing the sport, knowing that he can't run, Cerebral. but he's so smart mm-hmm. that he knows what to do all the time. I mean, even the year that they ended up losing, they lost at what a last second field goal to the no, Rams. The I think it was when they got knocked out. Um, he is first round. The Cowboys in Tampa. Who did so no, he was in Tampa? He won the first year, ago. lost the next right? year to the Cowboys. Two. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Are you sure? Okay, because I could have the sworn they year, lost that. They oh. brought in Antonio. That was the COVID year. They, COVID year, they brought in Antonio. I'm, I'm, I'm checking. So next year, this year, won. he didn't play 20, 20, so 22. They won the division. They went eight and nine, and they lost to the Lions. No, yeah, they lost Cowboys. to the Lions by eight. That was this year. Remember, uh, uh, what what's the quarterback name? Schedule. Man. I'm trying to pull. Um, it's the drive. Back, back you know. Like four or five. Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Well, yeah, Cowboys, mm-hmm. Dak. Okay, thirty-one to fourteen. Yeah, it was the year before that they lost to the in Rams. A, in a regular three. season. Okay. <laughs> and Did, they no, lost they to the Rams by three in the divisional playoff the year before that. Yeah. He was there for three Damn, years. What? That was fast. Yeah, three years. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, it was the first year. Then the next year yeah. they lost to the Rams by three at home. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. They, they lost. Okay, they lost to the Cowboys. You're correct. So, but he got a team that was basically a shell of itself to the playoffs again. Like, that. I would – and he threw and for 5,000 yards that year. You know, something like that. Let me see exactly what he threw for that year. His last year with the Rams, he threw for 4,694 yards. The year before that, yeah, 5,300. This guy's two years moving for 5,300 yards. Like, imagine the fact you give this man Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. No. And, I I mean, she she really messed his brain up because he could have come back and played again. I mean, Baker Mayfield is thrilled because he's got 100 million because of it. But, you have your wife, like, he could have come back and played, and, and she got into it. Of course. He was messed up mentally, and, and 
even he got messed up mentally and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah I'd do out it. The door. Sorry. I'd do it. <laughs> Dolphins are trying to win a championship. Go on they to haven't it. won Bye-bye. one since nineteen seventy four. Three. Two, three, three. Two right. three. Uh yeah. So we jump into uh gosh, I mean I want to talk about UFC you 300, go, but I also want to hit this John Tay Porter getting banned by the NBA. Okay, John Tay Porter, what are your thoughts on this? This guy just got banned from the NBA because he got caught gambling. He gambled like fifty thousand dollars. He made about seventy six. We get he's plus twenty six thousand. So he gets banned from the NBA like within three weeks. And it, it's clear that he did it. Um but yet we let guys who punch people in the face, they get a two game suspension. They choke them out. They get a 10 game suspension in the same season. Um, but yet we have gambling signs all over the arena. We, 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 we literally sell gambling to our fans as a league. We have uh, uh major league baseball right now. Shohei Otani, his translator somehow <clears throat> magically gambled $320 million of Otani's money and he never noticed, and no financial advisor of Otani's made a phone call to him to say, hey, man, you realize that you got, I mean, why are you gambling all this money? Like, but Major League Baseball has somehow made this translator the scapegoat, and he's been arrested and bailed out on $25,000 bond. Um, so, of course, they're making him a scapegoat. But yet, Rudy, the NBA Rudy basically banned this thing, man. It's, weeks. The leagues are basically do as I say, not as I do. Not as we promote gambling and things of that nature and we put it in your face all the time. And then after you gamble and lose all your money, we tell you, hey, go to Gamblers Anonymous. And they're like, I already lost. How are you going to tell them? No, I'm trying to get it back. I'm going to keep gambling and gambling and gambling. What are you talking about? Go to this little sign, 1-800. Call 1-800. If I don't know that I'm a gambler degenerate, that, I, that I'm abusing it. I'm all I know I'm, I'm behind the eight ball. Mm-hmm. And I got to get it more. I got to figure it out. So y'all keep throwing it in our face, throwing it in our face. And then you're going you're gonna to stop it because we're making money off it. But you're messing with the integrity of the league. We talked about this earlier. You can't have players gambling and doing things because mm-hmm. fans are betting and things of that nature. And that's their money. And we're making money off of that. But I can't. that's why we're pay, paying you this amount of money. But Porter's like, hold on, but Porter's like, I'm not getting paid that amount of money. I'm a fucking bench player. I got cut already. Shit, if I can make about a a, a million here or there or 500000 and put it in my pocket, I'm going to take a chance on it because why not? Because y'all are letting me gamble everywhere. It's a sight for this. It's a sight for that. Now you're telling me. But the thing about what Rudy said about Shona Atani and him, one person's a star. And one person's a bench rider. Who are we going to make the example out of, Rudy? The bench rider. It could have been LeBron James. LeBron James would have got a tap on the shoulder. Or we would never find out. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know. We LeBron, 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 LeBron's peak. It's, 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 yeah, it's oh, already right. happened. Damn, it is, it was Rich Paul. With LeBron James. Rich Paul. Already no, happened. That, that's his peak. Maverick, that's not Maverick Carter. As far as we know. So, the thing about... So, uh, oh, we're not going. And the PEDs. Um, the thing about that, you're gonna throw the, the people who you can make an example out of. You make an example out of that. That's been going around the world forever, man. People who are up here get away with shit. People who are down here don't. But here, here's 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 the comment to John T. Porter. Yeah. His brother is Michael Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. Michael's word of P- Michael Porter Jr. makes a lot of money, right? He did. Jante Porter is gambling on Jante Porter yeah. was gambling on the unders for his numbers. So he has no impact on the game whatsoever. He's not compromising the integrity of the Damn game. Shit. He barely plays. And what happened was that one particular day, his over under on how many it. points he was going to score got bet at such a high level or something like that. And I think it was like three and a half points. Like he's not in, he's not impacting the game. He just checked himself Instead out really fast out with an injury. It's probably the better thing to do. He said, "I'm sick." He checks himself out. The, well, now if he's missing shots, nope, though, he's, he's compromising integrity of the game. 
he, he's leaving the game. He just checked him. I'm hurt. I can't play. I play. I can't play now. The bets won. I'm almost wondering, like, why he didn't just ask his brother for, like, $20 million and make one the bet thing, for $20 million on gets, the over on the his number gets implicated. and his get rich tried. on it. What? what, for lending his brother money? Why, why am I he's lending brother. $20 million or $5 million for <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting. I'm having a great Friday night 000. at the strip club. Fifty thousand. <laughs> hey man, gambling. You man, not, just and, don't gamble in your sport, man. We're so only hitting the iceberg of it, man. Yeah, we're only. I mean, there, Shaq recently said on a, about, his own podcast with this guy yeah, from TNT after the coming after coming show, out, left call destroyed. about how he, he would go to the. He tell the referee, he says, "I know what you're doing. The the spread is six. And, um, like, this is, like, the why fact would, that why Shaq said that? that very clearly and he knows he because he wants attention. He doesn't care anymore. He wants attention. And, and it is true. It's probably true. Mm -hmm. it, it was true. Um, I mean, hell, the Sixers got back in the game tonight magically because there were some things that went the wrong way at a certain point. That guy Tony Brothers, really, that guy Tony Brothers never is we nice got some to calls. us. We hit. I mean, that, we hit the guy in the head. We, we were, did. We, were down we did. Head, but but we, did. I, I, we, we did. We did. Jimmy we Butler got freaking tackled and too, they didn't so. call it, but a common foul. So yes, we did. Hey, but we didn't do it hard. They, we, uh, did, we, did we have a smaller team, man. Stop. Ooh. Freaking so Kyle Lowry travels say, with the ball and yeah, he asks for a foul to get call. The heat to win the game? I... No, yeah. because we yeah, lost. We, we blew a thirteen point lead in the blink of an eye. So, well, they pushed Tyler Hero back court. They didn't call it. Oh, anyhow, that that said, um, let's jump into combat corner mm -hmm. real quick. I'm going to do it as fast as I can because I I said some stuff last I week think, that pissed a lot of people on, off in the UFC world. On this. The Dana, you know, White, I'm not the Dana heavy White. into it, but I did watch a little bit. Okay, but I think they missed what you were saying completely. I think Rudy mm -hmm. said the promotion exactly. of it, right? Completely wasn't as good as it should have been. Mm -hmm. Like That's exactly what I said. And you said a couple mm -hmm. of the fighters didn't have, you know. Of the situation they were going through, it just didn't seem like that's you know they should never got the shot they got, or it shouldn't have even been a, a fight at that point. But I think that what saved them was you know we had the Max Holloway situation, and it was was it Pereira? Was it somebody else? Yeah, so Alex Pereira. I think the, those the, the two situations they like, was a dud. Yeah, well, these, that fight was a dud. Exactly. Yeah, it was what I expected. So, a wipeout. Uh, the, what what I was saying, and 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 you know, people can. This is where people call me a casual and crap like that. I've been watching MMA for since 1993, since I was in high school. I was watching MMA. I watched the first UFC on pay per view for like thirty dollars at my house. So I watched it when they were people in four hundred pounds fighting out who's one hundred and fifty pounds. Like I've watched it forever. So and I've trained in in, in jujitsu. So uh, you can miss me with the crap about being casual. It wasn't about the fights. The fights specifically, I think a lot of the fights had no meaning. That's what I'm talking about. If I'm putting together the best card that I can put together, I'm putting together the best card I can put together that provides the most meaningful fights for the opportunity to win to get to fight cha for championships. Obviously, you cannot mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. every title on the line. It's impossible. But we, but what the UFC did in this one is they created the, they, well, they, they had a, the like BMF thing, which I think is the corniest what? crap on earth. I still I think it's corny. I had, it's corny. Cause I, cause the baddest I motherfucker. Yeah, like it's fast, you know, mm -hmm. deep yeah. from, from my it, it, perspective. It, it's cute. <laughs> and, and even even MMA fans and UFC fans, it's like they forgot why this was even created. It was created for Jorge Masvidal versus Nick, Nate Diaz to fight at Madison Square Garden. Why? To sell the card. Because the card itself had no championship fight. So they created this fake belt. You could have still had these two guys fight five rounds in the main event, and it will sold just the same. Names. They're two but good names. UFC fans primarily are – they're two names. They're huge names. But the UFC fans are mesmerized and brainwashed by titles, which is why they'll have they'll, – they'll all of a sudden have an interim title, even though there's a champion who just has an injury for a few months, and they'll create an interim, champ, interim title fight like they did with John Jones – and created that one they did last year because Jones got hurt or whatever. And 
like like you create these belts and then they, well that makes the car better. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's a fake belt. It ain't the real belt. <laughs> and the BMF isn't a real belt at all. So so what you're sitting here telling me is that you create that fight. I look, I love the Max Holloway Justin Gaethje fight for what it was. It was gonna be a fun fight. Now that I think it would parlay into a title shot for Max against Ilya Taporia. No, because I thought he was gonna lose. That's the main reason. But secondly, it because I think Volkanovski should still get a rematch against Ilya Taporia because he's was the five time defending featherweight champion, and and typically when you defend for that long, you get a rematch. Now I'm not saying that I like that idea, like that situation. I don't like it. I think guys should have to earn their way back regardless. But historically, the UFC gives guys immediate rematches when they have three, four, five title defenses. That's not going to happen now because it seems like Max is going to get that title shot, and he looked absolutely fantastic. But the point of what I was saying was, one, the main event wasn't set until two months ago. If you look at other ma- major cards, go look at UFC 100. UFC 100 drew 1.6 million pay-per-view buys. This UFC 300 barely broke a million. UFC 100 was 15 years ago when UFC was not so acknowledged mainstream. It wasn't on ESPN. So it was a completely different demographic. And yet it drew 60% more in pay-per-view. Yes, were the ticket sales higher? Sure, because inflation makes ticket sales be, tickets be sold for more money now. That is what it is. But don't sit here and try to... Don't, don't feed me a hamburger and call it filet mignon. I'm not dumb. And I think UFC fans should actually start using their brains and not just their emotions of saying, oh, there's 12 former or current champions. Who gives a shit? The opening fight was Cody Garbrandt and Devison Figueredo. Cody Garbrandt has not been the champion in eight and a half years. Who gives a shit? He was three and five in his last eight fights. He's now three and six. He got his ass kicked. They threw Jim Miller on this card. Jim Miller got the shit kicked out of him by Bobby Green. A much faster fighter against a slower, older fighter. They only put Jim Miller on there because he fought in 100 and he fought in 200 and he said he wanted to fight in 300. They did him a solid. But he got the shit kicked out of him. That wasn't an that wasn't an exciting fight. It was a one sided ass kicking. Then they put on, on Jessica Andrade versus Mar- Mar- Marina Rodriguez. It was a wipeout. Yeah, they made it a split decision. Andrade clearly won that fight. It wasn't a competitive fight. Jalen Turner Moicano, Rodano Mo- mm-hmm. Moicano. That's a decent fight. That's not setting up a title shot for anybody. That's not even getting somebody close. Turner drops Moicano in round one with like 17 seconds to go in the round and walks away. He thinks the fight's being stopped because he dropped him. Moicano gets up and then beats his ass in the second round. That was a decent fight, but is it a meaningful fight to the UFC, the landscape of the lightweight division? No. Then they go to Sadiq Youssef and Diego Lopez. That fight shouldn't even be on this card. It shouldn't even be on this card. It's a fight night card fight it's a freaking other ufc this is not a ufc 300 level fight lopez starches you seven a minute and a half that's not a competitive fight when i look at fights a great card one has meaning to every fight does that one have meaning sure to those guys to the landscape of titles no it does not holly home kayla harrison that was one that i really was surprised about I was wondering what Kayla Harrison would look like with the weight cut. She Uh-oh, made the weight cut. She looked like she was going to die. But okay. she she's 42. So you brought in Harrison to fight home because you presumed she was going to win. But home was the same person that got rid of Ronda Rousey and overcame those judo tosses. What they want, what we all ignore, including myself, was that Kayla Harrison is way bigger and stronger than Ronda Rousey. She couldn't stop the judo toss. But what the fuck was Holly Holm thinking, acting like she was going to grapple with with Kayla Harrison? She's a boxer. She should have been fighting at distance. She literally grappled with her on purpose. Once she did that, the shit was over. It was was another non-competitive fight. So you have a a woman here who beat up a 42-year-old. Aljamain Sterling fighting Calvin Cater. Aldo's moving up to to, to featherweight. He just lost the belt. He's on the prelims, which is insulting in itself, but he's on there because he's boring. He's boring. And you know what he did for 15 15 minutes, Nick? He hugged him. He literally wrestled for 15 minutes. He barely threw any strikes. Cater, I think, landed five punches in three rounds. And Cater is a guy who, when he fought Max Holloway, they had a slugfest. 
Holloway beat his ass, but Cater was fighting. Cater couldn't do anything, and Cater hasn't fought before this in two years. It's a wipeout. Now, one of the best fights of the night, which I expected to be, was Yuri Prohachka and Alexander Rakic. Fabulous fight. Rakic came out on fire. He was beating up Yuri's leg with kicks. I mean, unbelievable job, and Yuri is a zombie. He comes forward, 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 and he finishes Rakic in the second round. Until the Gaethje Holloway fight, that was the fight of the night. And realistically, still could have been the fight of the night. Because I thought overall, Max Holloway kicked the shit out of Justin Gaethje. You, calling stuff fights of the night when someone gets their ass completely handed to them is a little hard for me. Because I thought Max Holloway won that fight probably four rounds to one. Maybe it's three to two. But the rounds that he won, he clearly won. They were not close. And the way he, I mean, look. Then you go into the, the main card and you're making people pay to go see Bo Nickel who's got three fights in the UFC fighting Cody Brundage? Like, this is a joke. You can't sit here with a straight face and tell me that fight should be on this card, let alone on the main card, at least. Cholos Oliveira, great fight with Armand Sarukian. It was a wrestling match. Armand Sarukian basically laid on him, and I thought Oliveira won the fight because he had two, submi- two major submission attempts. I thought Sarukian went out late in the round three when he just completely flattened out. And it seems like Oliveira thought the same thing, but he didn't. And he gets the split decision when I thought Oliveira won the fight, but he didn't. Big fucking deal. But it wasn't some overly exciting fight. Then we get into Gaethje Holloway. Gaethje looked like shit. Gaethje looked like he something was wrong. And, and, and Max looked incredible. Yeah. I, I give Max, he's a warrior. I give him so much credit. But I knew that fight would be an overall slugfest. But Max really whooped his ass. Like, if you remove the the last 10-second knockout thing on the last second of the fight, if you remove that, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Was it the greatest fight I've ever seen? Fuck no. It was the ending. Because you know what? Max Holloway is that type of guy where he's going to sit here and say, let's go right now. I'm giving you your last shot. You got 10 seconds to knock my ass out. And instead, he knocks Gaethje out. And Max has done that before in fights where he says, let's go. And they just start rock em, sock em, robot. That's all that was. Rock em, sock em, robot. You know, and, um, but after that fight, what do you have happen? The energy of the arena goes like this. That should not have been your third fight. It should have been your co-main event, realistically. You put Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhanan. I mean, that was a wipeout too. Wei Li won that. She won the fight in the first round. And then the second round, and then she won a decision. Because she choked her out in the end of the first round. The girl was out cold. She literally rolled off of her, and they woke her up. And then the corner says, do you want me to wake her up? What? At first, they thought she was, they were giving her smelling sauce. But apparently, if you push the nose up in some direction, it wakes you up. I don't know how. Don't ask me. I have no clue. And then you get the final fight, which is Pereira and, and Hill, and I expected Pereira to knock him out. I said it last week. I said it in all of our videos, and he knocked him out with the first punch he landed. The first punch he landed. The first punch he landed, he clipped him with three knuckles of his hand. It wasn't even clean, and he knocked him. He put him on his ass. After getting a nut shot, says, no, 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 I'm good. Glop, out, hammer fist, good night. Three minutes in. And you're going to sit here and tell me that this is the greatest fight card ever? It's not. It wasn't put together well. It was put together, like I said, with duct tape. It was because they poorly scheduled earlier, late last year, they didn't have the fights that they wanted, so they put this thing in two months early. When they promoted other title fights, look at what they've done right now. I mean, when they promote other fights with Conor McGregor, they've given four, five, six months notice. They promote the shit out of it in the past, back when they fought Jose Aldo. There are tons of fights that have had built-in stories to get almost like wrestling. I don't want to say it's wrestling, but almost in a similar way like like wrestling, where they built it up, it's been promoted. The UFC takes its fans for granted now. They expect the fans to watch, and that's the problem. They oversaturate with 52 cards a year. There's cards literally every week, sometimes two in a weekend. I think there was one year it was three in a weekend they were doing during during, – International Fight Week, which happens in June, July. You've oversaturated the market with fight with fights, and you just expect us to pay for this shit. And yes, for the fucking noobs who don't, you know, you go ahead and pay for it. You know, I watched it. Absolutely, of course, I watched it. 
Was the card overall okay? Yeah. Was the promotion of it good? No. Was the pomp and circumstance of it good? No. UFC 200 had a gold ring. They had the regular ass ring for UFC 300. I would have had a platinum ring. I would have had sparkles coming off. I would have, it would have been, a, it would have looked like WrestleMania. It would have been promoted like crazy. WWE promotes WrestleMania for, for a year before. Like as soon as the one ends, they're promoting the next one. This wasn't promoted. And they can sit here and say what they want, but the numbers tell you it wasn't promoted. Because if it only does 1 million buys, that's a high number for an, a, a, a good pay-per-view. That's a high number for a good pay-per-view. Is that a high number for the biggest card in history? No, it isn't. Not at all. Canelo, by himself, fighting the door, will sell more pay-per-views. Canelo Alvarez will sell more pay-per-views. Floyd Mayweather sold 4.5 million pay-per-views to fight Manny Pacquiao, and Pacquiao was 100, and Floyd was 105. Old. Floyd sold 4.2 million to fight Conor McGregor, who couldn't box. And you can't sell a million for the biggest card in the history of your of your organization, according to y'all? I, I don't buy it, and, and I'm not sitting here as a person who, I love MMA. I love it. It's my favorite sport. But don't sit here and, and tell me it's fucking raining when you're pissing on me. Don't tell me it's fucking hamburger when it's, tell me it's filet mignon when it's hamburger meat. It was a decent card. There were 10 wipeouts. Wipeout fights. A good card to me is not just seeing a bunch of knockouts. It's seeing a competitive fight that leads to a knockout, a submission, or a split decision. Unanimous decisions are not good fights. They're convincing victories, more often than not. Sometimes you have bad, sometimes you have bad judging. But if you have a unanimous decision, typically that wasn't a great fight. It was a convincing win for one person. And if people want to say I'm crazy and I'm a noob and I'm casual and all that fucking crap, go ahead, man. You can think what you want. But that card did not live up to the hype at all. At all. And don't tell me that a guy lands one punch and puts the guy out. And the guy is now after the fight complaining, saying he didn't have time to prepare. Jamal Hill, after the fight card, said, I, yeah, I took this on short notice. So did Pereira. They both took it. Pereira said after the fight, Nick, I'm go, I'll go fight in Brazil if you want me to in a month. Let's go. That's a bad motherfucker. I love Alex Pereira. But I knew what he was going to do. And he did it. And if you're surprised as an, as, a, as an MMA fan, a UFC fan, you ain't paying attention. And I'm the fucking casual? No, that motherfucker, been, you're the that casual. That could have been a Rudy rant, guys. That's so. it. So. <laughs> it could have been. Oh, but real quick, before we leave Combat Corner, this Saturday, we got uh, uh, Devin Haney against uh, Ryan Garcia. King Ryan versus Devin Haney. I mean, I don't know if King Ryan's yeah. in his right mind because yeah. he's like doing lots of weird shit. Um, it's a humongous fight this weekend. Like it's at the proper like weight bounce, for both of these guys. Uh, I'm, come back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bounce back from his win. From the exactly. win that he lost, the lot, the win that he was really like lost to Lomachenko. And, and, and I thought he it lost the fight. People that oh, he's wow. that guy, or you're better than the last hour that that he went out there and did. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't very impressed with it. Yeah, I wasn't very impressed. Yeah, I thought I he lost the fight to Lomachenko. I don't like what's going on with Ryan. Right, it's a little weird. Like, yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, Ryan, maybe that. I don't know crazy. if going to help him. <laughs> I, I don't think so. But um, yeah, I'm going with Devin, man. Um. It'll be interesting um, if Rudy invites yeah. me over this week because he yeah. didn't invite me last so. week and I wasn't in town. Uh, I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll watch. So I'm going. I'm going out to dinner on Saturday. Okay. I will be home probably in time. I'll, I'll be no at problem. home probably in. I, we'll, I think we'll, I'm going we'll, out. We'll, we'll catch we'll, it one of these weekends. We'll, things things change. Um, but I will be watching look, it somewhere, look, even if I'm sitting at, at a dinner table with my phone sure. in my hand like this. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, de definitely, that's I, I'm excited for that fight. I'm less excited than I was a few weeks back mm -hmm. before I saw Ryan Garcia go through his little mental episodes, which makes me wonder how he's been training. I, I don't know. I, I think Haney will win right. that fight. We um, are, we are you know, but, you know, we'll see, man.
We we have broken two hours. We are going to piss Donald off. Uh, we are two hours and four minutes. So man, that's I'm about wrap it. it up with this, you have man. anything I, I'm, to, I'm to wrap gonna up? Keep, with I'm going to keep it quick. Man, I was, I'm a big Miami Heat fan. But as a point guard, I grew to love Steph Curry. And to see how his career is possibly coming to a close, and I have him as a the best point guard of all time. Some people say he's not a point guard. Some people say it's Magic Johnson, but I have Steph Curry as the best point guard of all time because he what, what he brought to the league, his impact on the offensive end, I think is second to none of what he brings to the team because he made Draymond Green, who would be Popeye Jones back in the days, into a Hall of Famer. And for players like Draymond Green to not be able to stay on the court and help his guy out who he says he loved and care about by doing little things that really cost him the season this year because him not being on the court, they lost a lot of games when they ended up being a ninth seed and in a playoff game by a game or two for the standing. So if you have Draymond for most of the year, maybe they're, they're playing as a sixth seed or fifth seed this year and they're not playing the playoff game, playing game, and Steph Curry has a fighting chance in the playoffs to do something to show the player that he is. But he drained himself the whole year of keeping the team afloat, and he didn't have enough help. Um, not just him. It was Wiggins, who were supposed to be the second guy because after Clay came back from the injuries, you expected Clay to slip off a little bit. But you thought that Wiggins would have took the next step after he had that great finals. No. As a former number one pick, he went down the fucking drain also. And now y'all have my guy, Steph, sitting at home watching the playoffs with me. When a guy of his caliber and what he's done for this league should definitely still be playing and carrying the team on. I'm not even going to go into Clay because I said Clay had a great second half of the season and all the things he's gone through with his injuries and that, and that nature. He shouldn't have even been counted on as much as he was counted on. But they still needed him to be that guy or something similar he just couldn't uphold that so man I'm just saying man it's just a shame to see what happened to the Warriors because I became a big fan of theirs after Dwayne Wade kind of you know went down the drain and, and you know a little bit with a knee issue because he was my favorite player Steph Curry became my new favorite player I love him I wanted to go see a couple games just because I love to see what he does on the court, his constant movement, his, his, his conditioning that's second to none. Nobody else conditioning, runs around and shoots the ball off the dribble and create his own shot like him. Nobody does that. And to still be doing that at the age of 35, 36 now, man, it's just simply amazing, man. And just shout out to his career. Um, I hope he has another chance to, to have an impact in the playoffs. I say the NBA still needs him and still loves him and respects him. Man, so. Hopefully, he still gets another chance, man. Um, that's just my closing remark about the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry, man. I just want to give a shout out to that man for being a great player and, uh, you know, bringing smiles and, 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 and enjoyment for all of us watching him play his 12, 14, 15 year career he's been doing so far. The Warriors are back. The Warriors were 10 and 11 in the games that Draymond Green did not play from suspension. So if they had won five of those six, 11 yeah, that they the day, lost, they would have been the number three a Hall of Famer. He, two, two, number four seed. They've been a four seed. Becoming a Hall of Famer, not because he's a scorer or this and that. It's because Steph get doubled and triple team. He throws it to Draymond, and then he's a great decision maker from there. So he benefits off of Steph Curry. A lot of players benefit off of Steph yeah. Curry impact. That's Absolutely. why I say Steph Curry impact on offense is second to none. He <clears> makes Draymond <throat> Green. He makes Clay Thompson step up. Even though Clay Thompson had his moments, especially mm -hmm. when he was in his prime, of being an outstanding shooter, but all of that comes off of what Steph Curry brings to the game. Of you having to guard that motherfucker as soon as he gets in the parking lot. I call that parking lot defense. I brought that up about Caitlin Clark last week. Parking lot. As soon as he gets in the parking lot, you guard him. He goes to the bathroom, you guard him. He goes anywhere on that court, you guard him. And that's made everybody's life easier. And his impact, like I said, is second to none. And just, a, you know, like you said, it's a shame that his teammates couldn't help him out a little bit and let him drain out like he did. 
So uh, that will wrap it up for us this week. Uh, remember, you can fo- please follow, like, and subscribe. You can follow us at Come On Now the podcast, Come On Now podcast at Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and Come On Now Pod at on Twitter X. And of course, please do follow, subscribe to us on YouTube. We do appreciate. It. We're trying to get to that 500 subscriber mark by Sunday, so there'll be plenty of new content put up this week. And um, yeah, that's about it. We will be talking NFL draft next week because the first round of the, of, of the, the first round of the most exciting NFL draft is on Thursday. What if he goes? Oh God! If he does, it'll be the biggest farce in, in, in the world. God. I, I hope he, I hope I truly hope he ends up in Minnesota. I, I tr- for all the shit talking that Donald did about Kirk Cousins, I really hope they get JJ McCarthy. That'll be karma, like your T-shirt. Um, but then uh, finally, I we are work. I am working on uh, what well, we are working on, seeing if we get our boys back from Riot Comedy because their videos are about to pop from the playoffs. And let's see if they you know if we can get them on ne- in the next couple of weeks so they can talk about their their characters and. Uh, you know, get our boys back on, but definitely Thank we appreciate it, it man. and uh, we will see you next week. Come on now. Come on now. We thank you so much. Have a great week.